All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Raw Talk. I'm trying to be better with the intro, so I'm going to do my next uh, my next pods correctly. Um, we got the one and only Fousey, too. We go back, must be 100 years on YouTube. Um, every time someone brings this up, or every time I talk, because I talked with Rice a couple days ago, um, just released that pod, but every time I talk about my start on YouTube, I always talk about you, because you, and I, I think it's appropriate we start this podcast, even though I know we did one in the past, and I, and I shared this. I think it's important right off bat to share it again um, because a lot of people forget this kind of shit when people help them out. And I've been in places now where I've helped a lot of people out and people seem to fucking forget. But you, years ago, I don't even know the exact year, but I mean, if I'm looking at my YouTube numbers nine years ago, maybe 10 years ago, um, I was I was kind of blowing up on Instagram and I remember meeting you at a celebrity football game and it was history since then because you wanted to lose some weight. I was a trainer. I wanted to start a YouTube. You got me like 25,000 subscribers I was just talking to you this the other day. 25,000 subscribers with zero videos on a YouTube channel because you put me in like basically two kind of vlogs when you were like towards the peak or maybe it may uh, somewhere around the peak of your career. And uh, ever since then, obviously, you know, I don't know people who've seen you have seen you go up and down and up and down. And, and you've you easily out of all YouTubers have had the most tumultuous time, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really cool right now that like you Cause I remember you came into the gym and you were like, I'm going to do something. Watch. I promise you like, and you seemed a little crazy to me because mm -hmm. sometimes you go through your crazy moments, mm -hmm. which is that's you as a human. I love you and I respect you. Um, and I believed you though. I fully believed you. Cause I know that I talked to you enough. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this guy is, I know when he's really like serious, yeah. Yeah. even though some people will see you and be like, is, is he, is he a little crazy? Yeah. Um, which I mean, I think we all are a little bit. You may be a little bit more than others, mm. but uh, I just want to say before we get into the rest of this and get some more questions going, but I just want to say I'm really proud of you. I tweeted it, but I really meant it because I know how much this moment means for you. I know you just recently signed like a massive deal. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but it's a blessing to have you on. Um, true friend, someone that I've known for years and, and someone that, you know, through, through a lot of it, like I've talked to you when you, obviously I knew you when you had it all. I talked to you when you didn't have it. I talked to you when you lost it. I talked to you in between stages. And I mean, I remember we were, do you remember we were at my gym and months ago you came to me and you were talking about doing like uh, some fitness stuff and you were talking to me in the front of this is my old gym. I don't remember. About that was like, the worst the position yeah. that I was in, by the way, mentally and everything. I was yeah. talking to you like a former version of myself. Yeah. Like you were not, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have anything. Like it was. I was contemplating Uber. I was contemplating Costco, Amazon, everything. Yeah. And, and what would, do you remember the advice that I gave you? Because I'll tell you. I'll tell you, I'll remind you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, <clears throat> your advice was that I have to just like do it. You at the time said you should just vlog, vlog your life, post your stuff out there, just do it. Show them that you're there. And once you get the rhythm of it, you'll be good. Yeah. If I remember. It was essentially, yeah, it was essentially that. It was also, you, you came to me and I remember you were saying you were just like, you didn't know what to do. You were so distraught because like you've had so much and then you and then you got so little and you whatever you did with your money, not good decisions. I saw some of the stuff you talked to H3 about, but I was trying to remind you that like you didn't get to where you got by accident. Mm -hmm. You know, like people fell in love with your personality. Yeah, like you did the bullshit prank stuff. It got, you know, got people laughing, like whether they were all real or not. It's, just, it's neither here nor there at this point. Yeah. People were connected to your personality. And Correct. I was telling you that. And the thing that I was trying to remind you in that time was that although you didn't have the sort of relevancy or the sort of view count or the sort of like exposure that like you once had. And I can, I can only imagine what that must feel like to go from like number one YouTuber on the platform to like forgotten, forgotten completely. And then no disrespect. Right. Yeah. But I was trying to remind you that like you still got there on purpose mm -hmm. and you seem to have forget that that part of your life. And, and I try to just remind you that like you are now mm. starting at that point then when you were talking to me in my gym months ago now um, that you were starting from a higher set point than you ever started from the beginning. And I was trying to tell you that like when you had nothing, nothing, you were able to do it. Yeah. Now, even though you, you have don't have as much as you had once, you have everything. You yeah. Now you it. have all these people yeah. like this is like even people like me. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have switched up on you even since now you probably have a little bit more you know, now that you kind of start to do this again, everyone's like, oh shit, Fousey tube, this and that. I'm assuming that's something that's happening to you. Have yeah. you experienced some of that? Oh, 100%. Before we get into that, there's a couple of things I want to say to you because there's yeah. a lot we can talk about about that. One, 
me giving you those 25,000 subscribers is a testament to you because I've given a lot of people 25,000 subscribers, but they didn't know what to do with it. And they did it for a couple of months because they felt clouded and relevant and popping, but they didn't work hard to do it. You got given 25,000 subscribers, but now you have how much? Oh, I mean, millions on all platforms. Now you have how many businesses? Now you have how many gyms? Yeah. So that's a testament to you. Yeah. Um, so congratulations for that. And another testament to you is the fact that, yes, you are the one of the only people who has always shouted me out every time just to give me my roses. And I appreciate that. So when you tweeted me to say congratulations on the deal, it wasn't just a tweet. It meant a lot to me. But in that same vein. Yeah. You're my brother, right? Of course. Can I call you out for something? Go ahead. I know it wasn't intentional. I know it wasn't, but it hurt me so bad. And I think I finally have the confidence to share it with you. What is it? <laughs> yeah, I love this. <laughs> before, I love this. before I fought Deji, you okay. came up to me in the gym and you looked me dead in the eyes and you said, you have to win this, Yusuf. I said, I know. You said, Yusuf, they're trying to use you as the reason to like get back on top and hate on you. You have to win. I said, I know. Yes. So every day in training, I was thinking like, Brad, 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 I got to prove him right. Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah. After the fight. I saw you tweet out like face temper a bunch of people. I never got a text or anything from you to just say you got your ass beat, but you're good, brother. I love you. I Are know you it sure wasn't. I never I'm, I'm you? sure. I'm sure. I know it wasn't intentional, but those things like I was like fuck because I look up to you so much. So when that didn't happen, I was like for years. Guess what I thought? I'm actually gonna tell you something crazy right now. I talked about you in therapy. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. Are you serious? I swear to God, I'm living with my sister after I got out of the mental health hospital. I started yeah. talking to you about in therapy in the mental health hospital. And I said, uh, I want to go back to live in L.A., but I don't have money for a gym membership right now. And the gym that I go to, my friend Brad owns, but I think he's mad at me right now. And I'm scared to go because I think he's not going to let me in. Why would I, Remember I text you? <laughs> and just to prove this, did I or did I not text you a couple of months ago and said, Brad, can I start coming to the gym to document my new journey? Yeah, of course. But you've I, always had that. Respect. I always had that. But I asked this time because I thought you were upset. Bro, why would I be upset? I don't know. No, I, I took it. You know, you know, the mind does crazy things. Yeah. The mind does crazy things. So yeah. I really I was like, I upset Brad. I wasn't G7. I messed up. Da, da, da. <laughs> I wasn't G7. Yeah. Now, even at that time, you, you weren't even anything towards what you're doing now. But I mean, that's interesting. I, I, honestly, I don't blame you. I think maybe I think a part of me, if I think about that time, I probably just felt a little slight secondhand embarrassment for mm, you mm. just because of the way it went down. Yeah. And I think maybe I just thought, oh, if I just don't, I don't I don't need to say anything. It's you know? uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely didn't mean disrespect because I mean, bro, you're you're one of the number one people like that I've ever really kind of you I mean, I don't even know out of out of everyone in this industry, you I've known you the longest. I've talked to you the longest. I've seen you through the most like. I have nothing but respect for you. Um, you know? What I just did, by the way, is what I do on my live streams, which I'm sure we're going to talk about. I'm brutally honest now. At 33, good. I live in full it's authenticity. Good. So if I'm sitting with a girl, I'll ask her exactly what I want to her face, to her eyes. I'm saving her and me the time. If she's with it, she's going to say yes. If she's not, she's going to say no, and I'm going to respect her boundaries. But I live authentically blunt now. It's good. That's it's how it so should good. be. It's so freeing. Well, so freeing. Well, when did you realize that? When you were like, how how I'm going to continue on more on the internet? So or how I'm I always more had spurts of that growing up. I think it's more a testament to me growing up in my real life as Yusuf versus growing up as FusiTube. I was always had spurts of that, but I was always still trying to juggle my image so I wouldn't be able to be authentic. But now that I've taken full ownership of Yusuf, and Fusi is just like the crackhead July 15th cousin of mine that I have fun <laughs> with. I just, I, I'm just myself. Bro, did, okay, then if you're just, on, if you're, if you're completely authentic. Try me. Yousef. Try and me. you're just blunt. Did uh. you call in the bomb threat? No, are you crazy? Bro, come on. Brad. Brad I was there, bro. Brad, Bradley Martin. I was there. Bradley Martin. Okay. I was there. I'm Me and Adam were there. Event. I'm okay. wearing an expensive ass outfit. I mm -hmm. invested over $400,000 just for the theater and Live Nation and everything. I paid for all the rappers to come. I said Drake was coming. Why the hell would I call him my own bomb threat? Because they didn't come. Because no one came through. They were all backstage. Not Drake. Not Drake. Drake was not backstage. Drake was not backstage. <laughs> not Drake was, was in there. Costa Rica dancing or something. But everybody else was there. We ain't so, gonna talk about that though. No, I did not, Brad. Hundred percent. Wallahi. I swear. Wallahi. On oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Even though my Wallahi doesn't have too much um, value right now because yeah, I used it. Yeah. yeah. So what 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 is the thing that people are most upset with you right now? Right now? Yeah. Because I obviously I see some shit and I like 
you're you're in it in it and you obviously know yeah your actions in it you know your words in it you yeah. know what people are saying yeah so so talk to us about that situation in the with the with so the i've been live for 36 days so i was depressed as ever in my depression i started i want to tell you my whole story of my comeback though so i'm going to tell a solidified one right now and then later at the end i'm going to just going to tell the whole thing to motivate people well i, I want to say first and foremost right now before we get into the story because i want you to do it i literally saw you start how many subscribers are you averaging in the very beginning like 200 a hundred a hundred bro and then you're in the gym I, i'm damn near every other day i saw you in there live streaming and then next thing you know you're getting like what 10 11 000. when did that start popping because um you you went from like not i remember literally you talking to you being like i need to figure this shit out and then you just did it like small numbers and it yeah it built, it built so i quickly. never thought that i could do live streaming because to me i didn't understand it i understood youtube you film a video, you do this, it has to go at this pace, you post a thumbnail title. I knew the YouTube game. And whenever I know something, it's scary because once Flusi focuses on something, it's game over if he's passionate about it. I'm a person who, if I'm passionate and obsessed over something, it's game over. Nothing is stopping me. But if I'm not passionate, I'm like depressed. I have no energy. I don't care for it. So I started going to the gym, Zoo Culture, by the way, um, in Ventura, um, Boulevard. In, uh, yeah, on Ventura Boulevard. In Encino. Yeah, in yeah. Encino. Yeah. Great gym, by the way, for anybody who knows. Um, owned by a YouTuber. Great gym. A um, lot of the lighting is great. It's just a great atmosphere. They have a steam room now. Um, the sauna, girl, sauna, sauna. The sauna. The yeah. girls are all, like, super, like, uh, cool. Um, yeah, yeah. So I... Um, I started a subathon, a live stream. Yeah. I did it for a day. I took them to the gym. I had no manager, no team, nothing. I'm still just nothing, forgotten. Took my live stream, a couple yeah. of hundred, a hundred people went to the gym. That night I said, guys, I don't want to turn it off. Why don't you guys just chill here? Come back in the morning. I'll still be live. So I went to sleep while live. And you just plugged the shit in and kept it plugged in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not knowing what I was doing, no plan that I'm going to do a 36 day subathon, end up getting a deal from nothing. I just did it to do it. And one of the most important things in life, they always say, you don't need to know how, you don't need to know why, but you have to start. You have to just do it. The rest will come into play. And I trusted that. One day turned into two. But to that point, which is you're so right, I want you to continue the story. But why did it take you so long just to trust that? Because I remember having conversations with you leading up to that months, whatever, yeah. prior. And I was saying the same shit to you. I was like, just do it. Like, just do it. But you were so hesitant to do it. You know what I found interesting? And I want to talk about this. We'll talk about this after you tell the rest of the story. But you know you did the ayahuasca stuff. I'm not saying that's what changed it all for you. But I remember I asked mm. you when you came to me at the gym. I was like, how was it? You were like, fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. And you said, so, if I remember correctly, you said, just give it time. It might change later. Did you not? Yes. Okay. I swear. I don't know. I'm not saying this is the thing that changed yeah, it all yeah. for you. But I, I do. I'm telling you because I remember you said it was terrible. And I, and I, and I <laughs> know terrible. it was terrible for me too. Oh, but really? It, but I needed it to be terrible. How many times did you do it? I've done it four times now. How many did you do it in that one Twice. time? Twice. Twice. Yeah. I did four days in a row, nine days without sleeping. They were the, all terrible. In Peru, in the jungle. They were all terrible. Mosquito bites all you over my back. You needed to get that shit out. No, whenever there, I was purging and like it sounded like a devil was coming out of me, literally, the guy who was doing it, he had been there for years. He was so skinny. He had nothing left. And he said... You have so much negativity in you that yeah, you've acquired bro. over the years. You have to get all of it out before the good comes in. Yeah. His recommendation was stay here for six months to a year. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably, give you like you don't have to pay. We just want to take care of you. I said, you are tripping. You probably need it. I ended up having a manic breakdown and flying home then. We'll get into that. But yeah, yeah continue the, the, the Twitch journey. I started the subathons. All of a sudden, um, I was getting a good amount of subscribers, 10 a day, 25 a day. And then one gentleman. Why, why do you think people are subscribing to you? Um, it's a way to show support. But why do you think they are subscribing to you? What do you think people like about you? They've The people who were watching me when I first started are the people who've been with me since 2011. The real ones. They've yeah. seen everything. Yeah. So they know Yusuf has no more money. Yusuf has mental issues. Yusuf fucked up. Yeah. But they said, I believe in Yusuf. So I want to support him. And then this one guy by the name of Nadim. I'm not going to say his username because the New York Times just tried to find his name when all the drama went down. Nadim starts investing big into my streams. I'm talking gifting like 100 subs, 200 subs, 300. Whoa. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? He did it for one day, two days, three days. 
I then checked my emails. I had an email from this guy before he even started gifting. And the email said, hey, Yusuf, um, love you. I want to get a gym workout in with you. Can you train me? I get that email every day. Yeah. I'm not going to pay it no mind. At the time, though, I was working on a fitness app. I was working on my own fitness transformation. And I was in school to become a personal trainer. So I said, perfect. He replied and said, I'll even pay you. The second he said that, he did something nobody did. I said, fuck yeah, I'm going to get a paid client so I can use on my resume. We, he flies down. We go to the gym. I make him throw up twice in zoo culture. Still haven't posted the video. <laughs> he takes me out to Boa Steakhouse that night with me and my friend and his friend. We eat a nice steak. He celebrates me. He gives me $3,500 in cash at the dinner. What the fuck? I talked to him so privately. trying to fuck you or what? I, that's what I thought. Yeah. And I was so down, but I'm like, just let me know. <laughs> Just like fucking let me know, you know, don't be like manipulative. Yo. So I pull him to the side and I ask him, I said, what do you want a hand job, a blow job? Like, just tell me, you know what he says? What? He goes, Yusuf, I wouldn't have retired my mom and bought her a house if it wasn't for your videos Damn. and you motivating me. You've supported me and I believe in you. You just don't believe in yourself right now. I'm going to help you believe in yourself again. That right there, you know, as a social media influencer, especially one that used to be the engagement through the roof of dopamine high, millions of views, yeah. millions of likes, getting nothing. Now that I was getting something, I was motivated again by what I could see getting results from. Yeah. I wasn't motivated on Twitch because I thought it was impossible. How can you be like Kai Sinat? How can you, like you're 33 years old. Kai Sinat's brand new in the industry. He has no drama. He doesn't have a July 15th. He had like his- like, He's building that up though. Yeah. yeah. So I always He's thought lesser than once I started believing in myself and once I understood Twitch. So I finally understood Twitch just like I understood YouTube. The second that happened, I looked in the camera, just like I did in the beginning of my YouTube career with 10 people watching me on Ustream and said, I guarantee you guys, I'm gonna walk my mom and dad down a Hollywood red carpet. I was living in my parents' house. Years later, I was in Tyler Perry Media Halloween with you walking my parents down yeah, a red yeah. carpet. I looked at the camera and said, I'm not yet, but I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna be the number one most subscribed IRL streamer in the world. From there, reached number eight worldwide, most subscribed reached number one IRL. And what I mean by that is IRL is not just chatting. IRL is people who go around and yeah, travel. You're moving around. I became number one. And uh, before yesterday, the kick deal came in and my life has changed. But one last thing. You said, why are people mad at you? Yeah. Why are when people? I started this whole thing, I was grounded. I was happy. I was healthy. I was praying five times a day. I was eating healthy. I was sleeping healthy. I was taking care of my mental health. They saw me go and get TMS treatments for depression. That's when they shock your head for seven weeks for five days in a row. They saw me taking care of myself. They saw me treating people nice. They saw me be happy. Yeah, and then I, I saw it too kind of. Over the course of yeah. 36 days, he came back. I was July 15th manic. There's videos and pictures of me in Toronto doing well, I saw you. I saw you. I saw a clip where it was muted and you were yelling at her. Bro, I was. Is that, is that real? No, oh, me were and you, her are Were you bit? singing a song? Someone said he's singing a song. No, yeah, me and her in a bit, we like, we fight. I fire her every day. It's just a bit, though. I love her. I don't know. I saw that neck vein. I was like, I, <laughs> I was singing. That I was singing. Yo, you were singing. But with that being said, I was very mean to people. Yeah. I was disrespecting people. I was cussing out fans. I was losing myself. And everybody was trying to tell me. So people were mad that Yusuf, you have all these people in your life trying to wake you up and you're not listening. My addiction was acting up. And then I got myself into a position that could have literally ended my life the other day in the airport. So they're really upset that like Yusuf, you got your 15th fucking chance at yeah, life and you're literally. trying to self-sabotage it again. So what do you need to do to not sabotage it? Cause like, it's so tough. Cause you, you are literally you, what you have bipolar disorder. Like well, actually I'm not. So I was misdiagnosed as bipolar. I so talked about that. You actually have something. Though. I have severe depression. I have OCD. I have anxiety. And I have an addiction. So, but what could, but bro, I've seen you. Is it because you are taking the medicine for the depression that you're, because I've seen you like literally become a different person. Yeah. So it's not manic then. Um, it, it's like, it's the, it's the influences of all the energy. I'm very passionate. So just like it can go passionate on one side, it could go passionate but bro, on you the other side. You're sure you're not actually clinically something? Cause I've seen you like literally, I was, I've had conversations with you when you've been like, on the other side, yeah. not right now. Yeah. And I've been like, oh, this dude's like a different person. Yeah. 
Um, Are you sure? I am sure because I did a 30 day evaluation in Karen, Pennsylvania with psychiatrists, doctors, testing, everything. And they said, then how do you, how do your eyes completely change where you're like a just different human? Um, I, so I don't I, get it. So I started seeing my therapist again, right after the airport incident, I had three 90 minute sessions for me. And on my first stream back, she's actually going to sit down and explain to the audience what happened to Yusuf, what he's going through. She's going to sit down, explain it to me and explain it to the audience. And how do I a plan to combat this? It's fixed now. Why was I going so crazy? Why was I losing my mind? I went nine months after the Deji fight. Lost my girlfriend. Lost Happy Punch promotions. Lost my apartment that I was talk about that. Lost my apartment that I was into. Lost everything. Lost my name. Lost my confidence. My self identity. Everything. Lost Fusi. I was only Yusuf now. Who the fuck is Yusuf? I don't know who Yusuf was. Um, I get it because this is like your your Fousey as far as created like related to all the clout and all the views and yeah, all, stuff, and it's but all gone. of a sudden I go from that I literally applied to be an Uber driver I know you were I got rejected because too. my license was suspended I was about to apply at Costco I go from that to being number eight in the world that's a lot to fucking manage, especially when you're 24 seven, no breaks. My stream is open 24 seven. I know that was crazy. No breaks. I knew that was going to happen. No management, no help, no lawyer, no nothing. Guess why it's fixed now? Why is it fixed? now? I got the deal from kick. So now I'm financially secure. Even if I get a zero subscribers for the entire year, I'm making millions. I now no longer have financial insecurity. So now I can refocus on my image, refocus on myself and do this in an even keel and not have to go crazy and be a crackhead for views. Well, you know why that's tough though for me when I hear it and I like, obviously I want to believe it, but you've had financial security before and you fucked it all off before. So what, what's different? What's actually different now? Because I fucked it all off before. I never used to understand money. I was in my 20s and the way money was introduced to me, I, there was a time when I was with CAA living in LA in 2018 on my kitchen counter in the morning on top of a bunch of mess and dirtiness and Postmates and food and drinks. I had over $200,000 in checks uncashed. That I would get on a daily basis. I would get a knock on the door from like UPS. Oh, here's this uh, thing open $100,000. So the way money was introduced to me is that money's infinite money's forever. I believe in positivity. It can never go. My dad, who was a true hustler, came here from Palestine with zero dollars in his pocket. No college degree, opened up a deli, put all his, his kids through school and got them cars. Looked at me and said, you said prepare for the hardships, the hard times. I looked at my father in the eyes and said, what hard times, Baba? I'll never lose this. This is forever lost every single dollar. So now I understand now there's a full accounting team who works for me. I don't touch a single thing. I can't do anything without their permission. They invest everything. They do everything. I now have the team around me that I never had. Whenever I did YouTube, even when I was the number one on YouTube, I didn't have a team after I got kicked out of CAA. I was by myself. I wasn't a financial manager. I never got to focus on just the content. I always had to juggle everything at once. For the first time in my career, 33 years old, started in 2011. I now have PR. I now have management. I all got it in the last 36 days, mind you. Yeah. PR, management, accountant, assistant, everybody. So let's let's talk about that then. The, in the last 36 days, obviously all these people came to your life and now are in your life and are working, et cetera. What is that like when, you know, you there was no one was there prior like all these people coming into your life now like does doesn't make you feel a certain way or what about what about i guess more more so interesting to me is influencers like you when see they it you see it and you know it more than anybody yeah when i was a friend of mine dean the great got really mad at me when i said <clears throat> this on twitch stream the other day but i'll elaborate on it before i went into the second mental health hospital this year in january i spent my 33rd birthday by the way in a mental health hospital my mom dad sister brother-in-law and niece came to visit me to blow out the cake for 30 minutes before they got kicked out um not a single friend was hitting me up there were friends like dean um keemstar did reach out during that time so i can't but when you're so alone you feel like nobody's reaching out yeah. i would post on my sh uh, close friends and say guys I know I literally said this on my close friends in January. I posted a story. Guys, I know I'm bad at friendships and I know I'm very selfish and I know I ruined a lot of my friendships with you guys over the years. I really need somebody to hang out with me. Can anybody? No reply. Now, my phone does not stop ringing. The texts don't stop coming in. 
when I was out with a bunch of influencers, Keem actually called me. He said, go to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom. He said, Yusuf, I'm happy for you. The king is back. You're going to kill it. But you have to be conscious of why these girls are around you right now, Yusuf. And I said, Keem, I understand. But in the same way that they're using me, I'm using them. But also, it doesn't mean that I can't be a good person just because I know that I'm being used for content. And you're views. talking about the other streamers that you're working with? Yeah, bro. Okay. These... I know why they're there. Come on now. Yeah. But I get it. I get it. They have to protect their brand. Why would they hang out with somebody who's suicidal and depressed and all that shit? They woke. So now, though, that I'm on, bruh, I collabed with, and this isn't a diss to any of these people. In the week that I've done it, I've collabed with Nadia Amaranth. Amaranth is like the queen of shit. Yeah. Got reacted to and talked to Kai Sanat, XQC, Aiden Ross, yeah. Rice Gum, everybody in the game. Yeah. And I love that. I'm not yeah. telling them not to do it. I love that. But I feel like, I actually feel proud of that because I feel like I had to earn that respect back. You, yeah, I mean. My career was gone. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, man. I would be in zoo culture. Yusuf's in the gym. A couple of people, oh, hey, Yusuf, da, da, da. Because my face will never be forgotten. No Even way. when I was irrelevant, I would go outside with my parents. People would come up to me and get a picture. My parents would say, see, everybody loves you. I said, mama, they recognize my face. They haven't seen me since 2013. You heard them. They just want a picture. They don't watch my stuff now. Now, I feel like this resurgence, because with what I did, I went viral on TikTok for 36 days straight. TikTok yeah. is the new generation. It's amazing. I just went to Toronto, Houston, and Chicago. I can't walk outside without people chasing me, hounding my car, doing all this stuff. I shut down a club in Toronto. Do you think, based on that, because you've, you've, you've done this before already, and I'm really curious about this, and I think I kind of know the answer, but from your perspective, being in both sides, obviously you have to spend a little bit more time streaming, but being massive on YouTube, interaction in person versus being bigger on Twitch... I feel like the Twitch audience Say that one more time. being massive on YouTube, yeah. right? And then you're out doing something and people are like, oh my God, can I get a picture? Right. Yeah. And I'm curious about the difference between like having the popularity on Twitch. Is it like, are people more inclined? But I feel like it's also your type of content is, has always been very like intimate. Yeah. So maybe regardless of the platform, because of the type of content, yeah. you will always get a good response. Yeah. So Dosa Fusi, obviously the DOF Brubras, won me two streamies back to back. The biggest awards that were fan voted against the biggest YouTubers. I beat fucking Smosh in like 2018. Yeah. Um, I got creator of the year and show of the year. They were the most intimate. Twitch right now, and I tell them this all the time, we call it parasocially fucking. I don't know if you know what that means. No, what the fuck is parasocial? Parasocial is a relationship where it's like a one-sided relationship that you feel towards the person you're watching or the person who's streaming is saying. Parasocial, so we're connected. But I think I'm so close to my audience that no creator can duplicate because how did I get big? It's not my content. It's not my, it yeah. is my personality. It's how I connect with the audience. Of course. I, I make that. them feel seen. I make them feel heard. I spend every single day, even while live stream, messaging people back in the discord, replying to everybody. I go above and fucking beyond to be close to these people. Twitch is now the most insane. I feel like the Nelk boys, a positive Nelk boys on steroids. And you'll see when I start traveling <laughs> the world. I even said that to John Shahidi. That's hilarious. I met Salim, by the way, in Toronto. I saw that. Everyone was like, oh, he hated Fousey. He, he was so nice. He's nice. He was he's also so just really nice. chill. Like, I thought not... he was going to be like a crackhead, <clears throat> drunk. His eyes were pure. He was happy. He was calm. No, he's dope. He was great. So I call it the positive Nelk boys on steroids. And this connection now, people come up to me not to be like, yeah, there's a lot of people who treat me like a Pokemon card, pull their phone out, get a picture. Because I saw a video. And I yell at them. I, yeah. I try to tell them celebrity culture isn't shit. Like, ask me how I am, how I'm doing. Make a connection with me. Fuck the moment on camera. Make a moment in your mind. Yeah. But you understand. You have to also understand that, like, they obviously, like, at the same time, they, I'm sure they're not as <clears throat> versed in the art, maybe, of, like, trying to do that because they're, they're, you know, the intimidation in it or, like, the shyness in it. Like, you do this because you do this, right? Yeah. You've done it. So for them to be like, to ask you something of significance when they're probably like a little super nervous. Yeah. It's kind of hard, right? It is. And that's why I'm trying to enlighten them. Yeah. yeah I get I'm it. not just letting them do it and go away. And I say it in a loving way, but some people come up to me, look me dead in the eye and say, you're the reason I lost this much weight. You're the reason I got yeah. off this drug. You're the reason I'm sober. You're the reason I'm happy. You're the reason I didn't off myself. Yeah. I'm, I, that's I, what sticks. I mean, that's what's most powerful, man. And that's why, and that's why, like, I remember talking to you months and months ago. It was like. 
you are you for you are you for a reason. Like yeah. it's not like, and that was the biggest thing I tried to tell you that day in the gym. I remember we were sitting in the front of my old gym and it was like, you have that special talent of speaking to people from a place of knowing what it's like yeah. to not feel good. And, and a lot of people, like I have that same talent mm -hmm. and, and you had it and I saw you had it before I ever was even sharing mm -hmm. it. And I knew that's why you had success, regardless of what you did content wise. Mm -hmm. I knew that you could always continue to have success if you just connected with that. Yeah. And you, and you now have like grown so much more and obviously you've learned so much more that through all now your negative shit over the last however many years of like your complete downfall, mm -hmm. you can now share all that you've learned there yeah. continuously with your audience moving forward. So um fuck i have a really bad memory i'm trying to remember what i was just gonna say i might have to come back to it um i forgot sorry come no on. it's good um i forget a lot no it's fine I'm, I'm always ready but anyway so let's let's talk a little bit about um i guess the girl stuff or are you like gay now or something like what's going on people think so are you a little gay so i'll say this <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah that wasn't a no, dude. I'm straight. Okay, okay. I only like women. Okay, because you said you're gonna jerk the fucking guy. I'm very, very comfortable with my sexuality. Yeah, no, I get it. And I push the line a lot. Why do I do that? One, because I'm comfortable doing it. It makes me have fun. It makes me feel free, and not have to be worried about. Oh my god, is that sus? Da da da. Yeah, who cares? And also to piss off all the kids who are so insecure that they say, "Hey, yo, sus." Da da da. I'm trying to show like. Guys, I raise up more girls than you can in your entire life. I don't have sex because I'm celibate, but if I wanted to, it could be nasty. And yes, <laughs> I still look at you in the eyes and say, I'll suck your dick. It's yeah. kind of like to prove I, a point. I feel like... This I do of... say I'm non-binary and gay, but that's just an inside joke between my audience. But my audience did do a poll live, is Fousey bisexual? And they all thought yes. And you're not? I'm not. Okay. I just, it reminds me of like, I remember, I don't know when Aiden Ross started. He's, I think he was one of the first streamers who started like the super sus. I think Aiden's shit. gay though. Actually. Yeah. You think Aiden Ross is RL, gay? Yeah. Aiden Ross. Yeah. He's very zesty. Like when we talk privately, like on FaceTime, like on the internet, he's like, oh yeah, 21 Savage, little Uzi Vert. On FaceTime, he was like, Fusi, I'd love for you to come to Miami. I don't believe that. Huh? I don't believe that. I'll face someone. Fusi, I'd, lo I I'd love for you to come to Miami, train me out, work me out a little bit. <laughs> it's, I'm it's, like. All right, I don't judge him. Yeah, I don't know, man. I've had conversations with him. I don't think he's gay. <laughs> he's scared of you. You're big. Yeah, but wouldn't you think his gay stuff would come out then? Because he's like, no. You know? when, once he, once you, you have to treat him nice and take down the first barrier. Uh, you have to peel the onion. Then you a see the gay. You're not Ross. there yet. Yeah. Got it. That's funny, man. Yeah. So have you, have you, uh, do you have anything planned to do with Kai? So it's crazy. Because I saw the DM. It's fucking crazy because I went from irrelevant to now. Talking to Kai through stream. He was watching me live. I was watching him live. Yeah. Talking to Aiden, getting a kick deal from Aiden. Rice Gum calling me to congratulate. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, and I love these kids because they're now the kings, but they all fucking say, you were the guy who paved the way, Fusi. And I respect that so yeah. much. Like even, even um, Agent said that on his stream. So Kai, Kai is very brand safe. And obviously right now I'm in muddy water. So I think it's going to take a while to get there. But I 100%, I put this on my vision board. I already manifested it. I'm going to be sitting on a stream with Kai 100%. So what? So Aiden's going to be first though. Aiden, I'm going to Miami with. and Yeah, Aiden's. The, Aiden's and fucking, I can finally stream with him now on kick because Twitch, you couldn't do that. Yeah, I remember that, David. Yeah. Um, so who was I going to ask you about Kai? Oh, Kai, by the way. Yeah. Kai came to the Roman vs. Fusi tour. So let me show you the impact. Whoa, let me show you the, the impact fuck? that these social media influencers have. There is a video of Kai Sinat at the Roman vs. Fusi tour, a little kid. Bro, this was years ago. Smiling, taking pictures with us in the meet and greet. And he tweeted me and said, you changed my life. And he DM me privately in 2018 saying, you're such a good person. I just want you to know that. Look how it comes full circle now. Now I'm glazing him. I want to be on his stream. He went from just a viewer, support, like supporting, getting inspired, to now being the number one Twitch streamer in the world. Yeah. Crazy. We have influence. That's why we have to use our influence and our power correctly. Yeah, absolutely. Why, why do you think it took you, so, why, it took you so long to realize that, though? I always like, realized it. You just did it wrong? I did it wrong. I was like, the way I try to say it, I was like a Super Saiyan version of Goku but I didn't know how to harness all my powers. So I would yeah. use it bad. Once I learned how to be as crazy as Yusuf is, as loud, as obnoxious, whatever, 
harness the powers, channel. ultra instinct, channel it, yeah. it's game over. I fucked up in Toronto. My whole career could be over right now yeah. because of what happened. So so the muddy waters, let's talk about what, what was that all really about with the girl? I'm a fucking idiot, Brad. I'm a fucking idiot. So tell it's us. as if I look for reasons to self-sabotage and lose everything. And I have to ask my therapist why that keeps happening. I party all night in Toronto. I go to the club all night. I don't drink. I'm sober. I go straight from the airport to the, I mean, I go straight from the club to the airport. Haven't slept. I stream all the way up until I sit at the airport seat. This is illegal. If somebody called in the airport and said, yo, passenger sitting in this seat in this airline has a bomb, Twitch would have banned me immediately for life, would have made articles, but I did it because I'm stupid and I was towing the line. I had lost it. Flight attendant was hot as shit. So I end the stream, flirt with her, yada, yada, all this shit. So I'm like, my dopamine is high. I'm horny as fuck, like all this shit. I get off the plane. I should go sit on my desk, sit on the seat, and sleep until I get back to L.A., shower, shave, pray, do the stream. I want more clout. I want more energy. I want to—I I call myself. I talk shit. I'm the best IRL streamer in the world. I go live in the New York airport. I go sit next to a girl at the bar. As soon as I sit next to her, she's receptive. She's throwing energy at me. She's happy, all this stuff. I'm having fun with her. She gives me a hug. When she gives me the hug, she kisses me on the cheek. Did she know you were streaming? Yeah. Okay. I asked her too, have you been drinking? I only had one drink, so you're not super drunk right now? Not at all. You can watch it. She says that. Yeah. I give her a hug. She kisses me on the cheek. What does my horny dumbass do? Can I kiss you on the lips? Why would you try to kiss Cause I'm friend? Just to be, show people like, to, yo, I just landed in New York. I haven't showered. I haven't slept. And I'm still about to do this shit like a <laughs> fucking dumbass. I kiss her multiple times. We're talking. Throughout, on stream. On stream. Yeah. Throughout the conversation, we start getting real. She tells me that her ex-boyfriend used to sex traffic her. And she has a tattoo over her genitals on her stomach right here that says his name. Oh. I send her $300 for tattoo removal. I also start crying vehemently, like hard. Might have been use, wrong usage of vehemently. but Vehemently. I, Probably wrong. Something. Yeah. I start crying hard. Why did I cry? I used to be addicted to massage parlors. Still am. Yeah. Still today. Yeah. When was the last time you went? Don't want to say. Fair. Um, I, I, I need here? to start going to my. He came a little late. I need to got to start. <laughs> going, I need to go to my SLA meeting, Sex Love um, Anonymous meeting. Is it? Is it? But okay, damn! I don't get you all hyped up on your addiction, but is it? <laughs> what is it like? Like when it's a really good massage, that's the best, right? So usually if they give you happy endings, their massage sucks. But when they're good, so massages. that's why you read the reviews and the people who don't get happy endings leave a review like, what the fuck? She was scratching my back and touching my butt. This shit <laughs> sucked. Usually when they do, but I don't want to say this to promote it. I know a place that has real life working day women. They have a day job, Kaiser, this, 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 but they have a family. So these women are gorgeous. And they live normal lives. They come. Whoa. They are fucking boss out the massage. When, when it's a good massage with the happy ending, forget about it. Forget about yeah, it. Was, forget about it. I was telling it. the guys After that a good shit. gym session, you get a good rub down. And then on top of that, finish that. And then you don't have to keep up with the relationship or how are you or the fights, nothing. You get to go home. So is it really an addiction or is it just like? Severe addiction. But because it, when it happens, like the last time I went, not going to say when last time I went, I had no intentions of going. I said, why the fuck? I'm sober now. All of a sudden something happened in my life. I've been stressed recently. What, what happened? Everything, this everything, all this stuff. Yeah. Okay. And then all of a sudden pops up in my head. I wonder what girl's working right now. Maybe I should just go check. See on autopilot. You literally lose control of your senses. I could literally sit here right now and say, Brad, do not drink this or do not lift that weight. No matter how much I said it, you're still going to lift that weight. I get in my car. I go. I finish. Real addiction. How was it? Incredible. <laughs> I'm not going to lie about my addiction. I'm not trying to promote Bro, it, but yeah, it was yeah. fucking incredible. I'm not trying to promote Here's it. Why. Here's why. Here's why. You know what? She comes in the room. She immediately knew what time it was. She's, <laughs> she saw a healthy young man. Usually she sees old-ass old men go to these massage parlors. Yeah, yeah. There's always old-ass men in the lobby. 
She says a good looking, hot ass young guy, but I'm so respectful to these women. Guess what I asked her? So mine comes from an intimacy disorder. Guess what I asked her while she's giving me a handy? While she's giving you the handy? Guess what I asked her? I have no idea, bro. Can you stop and give me a hug? No. <laughs> oh, no. Swear to God. I do it because of emotional damage that's been inside of me as a kid what? where I didn't get loved when I needed it most. My parents didn't say I love you till this year. I saw that with your dad saying that. Yeah. Right? So I have like. Is that real? Really? I swear to God. I have emotional damage that from a kid that never felt loved that got told when he massaged, when he humped a leopard, you're not the devil's in your head. You're not a good Muslim. You're going to die. You're a bad person. So I asked this woman for a hug. You know what she said? You're so cute. And she gave me a hug. I treat these women with nothing but respect. Usually guys are in there drunk. Do this, do that. Take off your clothes. I don't do none of that. Well, how do you know that? Huh? I tell you? How do you know Yeah, that? I talk to these women. Because hmm. I come so fast, I have time to talk to them. Respect. Yeah, usually, respect. usually they go like, yo, they saved the last 30 minutes. I go, I just need the last like five minutes. I swear to God. Wow. That's hilarious. I forgot what we were talking about before that. Oh, the airport incident. Yes, the airport thing. So then she shares her story. I send her $300. I start crying. Why do I start crying? Going to the massage parlors I've gone to over the years, I have no confirmation of this, but I always assumed, because I thought it was a thing, that a lot of these women were flown into this country. Hey, do you want a job? Work at this massage parlor, and you get to stay in this country. Being, like, used. Yeah. So I said, I have a lot of experience with sex trafficking. What did the internet hear? Uh. I sex trafficked women. Strike one. Strike two, I have my audience on their own, unprovoked, send me money to give to her. I sent her over $3,000. She starts crying. She was going to visit her two kids. She had $100 in her bank account. Strike two, because that's manipulation. You're trying to uh, uh, manipulate a woman who's in distress and a sex trafficker. Strike three, what does my dumbass do? This is a beautiful moment. All the comments, this is so wholesome. I love G7. I love you, Yusuf. What does my dumbass do? We walk off camera. Everyone can see us. We hug. We're kissing. I go, you want to go walk and just like, you know, mess around? She goes, yeah. We walk off camera. <laughs> I leave my camera and my luggage with the bar. That's how gone I am. I'm walking with her. Wait, why would you leave your shit like that? You were drunk. I walk away. I kiss her. We're kissing. We're talking. All this shit. We talk for a while. All of a sudden I go, I need to run back to my stream. As I'm running back to my stream, all I had to do was run back and say, guys, she has to catch her flight. And that would have been the best moment that happened on my stream in the entire subathon. Guess what my dumbass does? I sit down and I say, guys, I just joined the Mile High Club. Why did I do that? What? Why did I do that? Kitty, my assistant. Kitty, can I say it? Kitty has joined the Mile High Club multiple times. How was it? How did you like it? Come sit Kitty, here, Kitty. Come here. For one sec, for one sec. Come here, for one please, sec. Please, please, right I want to tell this story. Come here. Please, sit right over there. With the pit. Okay, yes. Okay, okay. That oh, dog is so God. cute. Oh, my Watch, God. Watch, ask her. Okay. So, you've done it twice. Okay, we did it three times. It was with the same... Am, am I talking loud? I no. I can't yeah. hear myself. Okay. We did it three times. It was with the same person. And we were flying to Italy. Three times on the same flight. Yeah, but it was yeah. an inter... Why'd you just do that? I'm so sorry. It's called a stress fart. I'm so sorry. Why'd you do that? I'm so sorry. Please don't kick me out, Brad. I'm sorry. Bro, what? I'm so sorry. Bro, you ripped major ass. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like I'm I, sorry. it ricocheted off the couch. I'm dude. actually sorry. You know how what many times he farts in my face? No, no, stop. Keep, 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 stay on the subject. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. sorry. I'm sorry. Well, okay. Um, all right, let me break it down. So I'm flying to Italy. It's an international flight and it's a red eye. Um, I was sitting in the back of the plane and I was bringing a duffel bag on board. Okay. Um, I had Tito shooters in the duffel bag. Oh my God. So when I'm like, this just happened, just the universe aligned. I have no idea. I'm walking and um, when I'm walking down the aisle, my shooters fall out of my bag and roll in front of this guy's feet. And he's just like, oh shit, looks like you're gonna be having a great time. I wish I was sitting next to you. So I said, save that seat. And when we take off, I'll move up next to you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a sec. Wait. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Are you about to tell me that you flew to Italy? Were no you by idea yourself? who this guy was. No, my friend, we booked at different times. So she was sitting in the front of the plane. I booked the night before. I had like literally, we were so far from each other. We were sitting separately. So you rizzed a random dude. 
it just it wasn't even riz okay we were making eye contact when we were waiting in the airport to board so it, it was in a i think it was LaGuardia. Um, or no, I'm sorry. It was Newark. Okay. And I mean, he was really attractive. He was a model. He was walking in Milan fashion week. So like the way he was dressed was like super attractive to me. Got and it. I was, I wasn't, I was eye rizzing him and he was eye rizzing me back. And I swear on my life, like I'm, I'm a nervous person. Like I will never riz a guy. I have never in my life gone up to a guy and flirted with them. Um, I wait for them to do it. So it just was pure coincidence that the Tito shooters like fumbled out of my bag and rolled in front of his feet. So he's just like, damn, it looks like you're going to be having a great time. I wish I was sitting next to you. So when we took off, I moved up next to him and we were drinking a little bit. And um, yeah, just one Welcome thing next to led to the world. next. This is a great story. And yeah. it just worked perfectly. He was sitting in the first line of seats next where, to the bathrooms. Yeah. So yeah. there was no seats in front of us. It was an international flight, a red eye. So it this is illegal, right, isn't it? It very. Yeah, we okay. had no idea though, but he looked he looked to me <clears throat> They're and too horny to search up the regulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like fuck it. Yeah, so he looked towards me. He's just like, "Have you ever joined the Mile High Club?" I was like, "No, have you?" And he's like, "No." He's like, "You want to?" And in international flights, the bathrooms are bigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we recorded everything too. Whoa, so we had whoa, it for what memoriam. the fuck is going on? Yeah, it was really it was I mean, I'm I, I honestly like Haram Haram very. But people People could say Like how bad it is Or whatever Like that was a bucket list Thing for me Not to do it with a stranger Fucking a random dude On a No on not a to do it with a stranger bucket Not list? to do it with a stranger But was it good? was a bucket Yeah it was great He was so tall um, I, I don't know We really enjoyed it We had fun We were drinking But that was the old me That was the old me Okay I'm different so now. Bro, <laughs> it's been an inside joke on my stream. Right before I even took the flight to New York, I literally said, oh my God, the flight attendant's hot. I'm going to join the Mile High Club. It's like no, a running inside so joke. No, illegal. So I run back to camera. First thing I say is, guys, I just joined the Mile High Club. I don't stop there. I double down. I swear to God, I joined the Mile High Club. Oh my God. I don't stop there. Wallahi. I just joined the Mile, well, Mile yeah. High Club. Bradley Martin, There's... I swear to God on everything that I love. I'm not going to say my mother, religion, or anything because this is a heavy subject. I swear to God on everything I love, I did not fuck this woman. Why would you say that? She comes back on camera, right? All of a sudden, what do I do? I'm sorry. I just used your pain, your story for a joke. I tried to be funny. I spent five minutes apologizing. Her response... Don't worry about it. You're the sweetest. Don't worry. It's just a joke. It's okay. I felt like shit. I'm so angry at this point. After what I did, she left. I'm on my Twitter. This guy tweets me, cussing me out. You should die. Kill yourself. And I go, I would call you a, and I use the F word, but I don't use that word. It's offensive. So I was just shooting myself in the foot. as well, I, I wait, wait, wait. That's you, actually why I got banned. You tweeted that? I said it out loud. Oh. I said I would call you a. Oh, you said it out loud In on response. your stream, but yeah. you read the tweet. Correct. And you said it on the stream. I didn't uh, read his tweet. I replied to him. I said, I would call you a yeah. F slur, Got it. but I don't use that word. It's offensive. So I don't you're... use that fucking word. Yeah. I was so fucking tired and weak and hurt and yeah. I needed rest. I land and it, everybody edits the clip on the internet. They make it seem like so out of context. They don't show nothing from the beginning, nothing from the end. What do they show? Me sitting down next to a woman, her drinking alcohol, me kissing her, me coming back on stream saying, I joined the Mile High Club. Yeah. No well, one to blame but myself. I fucked up. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's tough too because like also just the way things are clipped up nowadays. Like, dude, I saw a In clip. seconds, dog. It's Bro. always taken out of context. Bro, Keemstar. Keemstar, right? Text me immediately. Bro, what the fuck? How could you fuck up? My girlfriend's giving me hella shit for it. He wasn't even mad. His girlfriend was mad. And he's whipped by his girlfriend. So he goes, my girlfriend's giving me shit for it. I reply to him. First thing I say is, Keem, I did not fuck this woman. He goes to Twitter, bashes me. Goes on Drama Alert, bashes me. The next day, when I get banned, posts and says, Fousey gets banned on Twitch for uh, doing something with a sexually, with a drunk girl. Yeah. I reply to it and I go, I know my relationship with H3 affects you greatly, but I got banned for using the F slur and I showed proof. 
People started twisting the reason as to why I got banned to fit their favor. Even till this day, I have tweets on my Twitter right now, posted today. Fusi um, manipulated, did this, did that, got banned for doing this to a drunk girl. It had nothing to do with that. There's always going to be that negative narrative. Like, just because people yeah, but found this is out a about very it. Very fucking serious allegation. Yeah. Like, even though it's done by me, mm, yeah. this is fucking serious. No, I'm not dog. saying it's right, but when people find out information like that, some of those, the majority of those people aren't going to go. Ser- bro, you said, bro, what the fuck did you eat, dude? I've been, uh, we're going to talk about that. I haven't you been going to the gym. You can't just come here just fucking ripping I've been ass. eating a lot of bad stuff and sodium and what? everything. Bro, bad. I had a pint of gelato ass, ice though? cream yesterday. I'm okay. so sorry. That's so rude. I'm actually sorry. Um, it's disgusting. Look, look, at the end I'm of the day. This guy just doesn't smell. At the end of the day, listen. <laughs> when I used to go through this cancellation, when I was at the top of YouTube, I used to respond by myself. I remember when Keem exposed me for fake pranks. Yeah. I was in my apartment, 1600 Vine, penthouse apartment, living next door to Logan. No manager around me, no friends around me, no assistant around me. I pull out the camera, I press record, I cuss out the camera for 45 minutes and say my pranks are fake. Ruined my career. Now, I have a team around me. I wouldn't have survived this situation if I didn't have people around me telling me like, Yusuf, if you have your truth and you're good, there's nothing to stress about. And I got through it. At the end of the day though, it's not excusable. I fucked up so bad. And it's the reason I'm now going back to therapy. It's the reason I'm going to open up the stream with a therapist. It's the reason I'm going to sleep early, wake up early, go to the gym at Zoo Culture, eat healthy again. Because I almost fucked up everything God just gave me. Yeah, but let's let's talk about that idea a little bit. Can you really, though, fuck it up? Like, unless you, unless you did some really, really, like, actually did really fucked up shit. Uh-huh. I don't think you can at this point. I think you can. Here's the thing. You can... In the terms of mainstream media, meaning I won't get a Coca-Cola brand deal. I won't get Sony. I won't get that shit. Yeah. But um, I'll still have my audience, like the Nelk boys and everything they did with Happy Dad. Right. I don't want to just be that on social media, which I know I can be. G7 is going to be a multi-million dollar brand, just like Raw Gear, just like Nelk, all that shit. I want that, but I also want mainstream attention. I want my message to reach the mainstream. I want to be sitting on a reality sh- uh, talk show telling them how I feel like you could beat depression. And well, all let's that talk stuff. about that a little bit then. Cause, yeah. cause the mainstream is not going to be so main anymore though, man. Very true. I get like, I don't saying. think the the world is trending towards mainstream. Anymore. I get what you're saying, but I feel like it gives a legitimacy to your career that you don't have it outside of that. You could be popping on the internet, but you could also be popping on like wall street, you know, being on their feet. But the reason why you're not wrong, but I shouldn't I, fart again. No, don't fart. Okay. Again. The reason why I slightly just disagree is cause like, look at Kai, right? Kai had something that the mainstream, oh, this is a, it's a riot, all this shit. He had so many people come out. He has so much popularity, so much attention. It, that is the, that's like the new mainstream Correct. is not but mainstream. He still has mainstream. Kai hasn't even scratched the surface of where his career is going. Of course. Kai is Kevin Hart on steroids. You're talking about because steroids. he's fucking with, he's fucking with the rappers. And he had that. LeBron James manager agent fucking next to him on stream. And he's saying, yo, I want to do a movie with you. I want to put you in the show. I have this idea. Kai is at the beginning right now. Yeah. Kai is going to be here for years. Kai is going to be the Kevin Hart of the social media world. 100%. Yeah. He's going to be mainstream. He's going to be in movies. He's going to be on talk shows. That's coming. And that's because he didn't burn his chances and lose that mainstream appeal. Yeah. So so I see what you're saying. You're saying like there's certain things like if you actually got convicted of something terrible, like not even July 15th, all that stuff. I don't know if that would cancel you to that degree, though. Man. Every single time my managers would hit up an agency in the back when I was trying to build my career. We can't work with Fusi. We have a bad news about him. Anytime they reached out to producers, we can't work with Fusi. They care about that shit. They care about brand image. What does it say when I Google your name? They care about that shit a lot. I feel like it's mm. so different now, though. Like, cancel culture doesn't really exist. As long as you have a strong audience, you could get through anything, and it's how you push through it. Yeah, but what he's saying is 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 kind of not on... It's obviously on the same line, but it's different. I understand you're talking yeah. about the whole... Like there's like a different level, right? Yes. Of, of whether it's, it's brands that are involving themselves with creators. Yeah. Like he's talking about like Coca-Cola or being on like some main red carpet, red carpet. I was event. invited to a red carpet for a huge movie premiere. I was getting paid a lot of money to go. It was the morning the news broke off. They replied to my team and said, unfortunately, because of the news that transpired this morning, we can't have Fusi attend the event recently, recently. Yeah. Two days ago. So, so 
Do you think there's a cooling off period that it would require where it's, it's happening like, right now? Yeah. I've been banned. I'm not streaming. I get unbanned tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to go live. I might. Um, and I'm just going to let it release and then come back and just be chill. So you got a, you got a $15 million deal. I can't say the exact. Numbers. That's what it says everywhere. It's rumored. So that's not the, that's not correct. Why does it say that everywhere? Um, because the way their deal works, they pay you in two ways. <clears throat> They pay you, kick pays you hourly. So they cap it at 100 hours and they pay their creators hourly, their big creators, a certain number of dollars a month to work for 100 hours. That's your base. That's your salary. 100 hours a month. Even if you didn't get um, a subscription or donation, you still get that price. Mm -hmm. That price they gave me has never been given on kick before because I do 24-7. I far exceeded the 100 hours because I demanded it. So they're paying me for a disgusting amount of hours, which is going to break the Internet because I chose it on purpose and a, a crazy amount of pay. So my base just to stream, no subscriptions, n no donations over seven figures just to stream. On top of that, they gave me a signing bonus. I'm not going to talk about how much that was. That's where the big money came from. The reason I'm not going to talk about that is there's so many eyes on me. There's so many people watching. There's so many people who watch me to fail. I don't want people. I, I go out of the streets without security. I went to Toronto, no security. Chicago, no security. By myself with a camera. I'm wearing a Rolex on my wrist. I don't want people to look at me in the street and say, this guy's an easy come up. He has 15 million in his bank well, account. But you just saying that right now, you're just, you just. <clears throat> I'm they're not, not, saying you they're got, not watching Raw Talk. The people I'm worried about are not watching Raw Talk. You know what I, I mean? Don't, I don't know. It's going to get clipped up and be all over the internet. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're but I got your watch. I got, a disgusting Just FYI. I got a disgusting amount that I'm so grateful for that the first. Why thing are I'm, they saying 15 million for two years? Where is that? Who's making it? Because it's what? It's fat. It's fat? It's fat. It's a big deal. So is it 15 for two years? I told you I'm not going to say that. Well, why is I'm Look, saying why is that being said? Because um, that was the first leak by a guy named Scuba Ryan on Twitter. And whenever anybody gets a deal, he throws a egregious number out there. Got it. So it's not 15. You know, go fuck yourself. Let me tell bro. you this. You got to tell me off camera. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Okay. Um, I just got, let's say, $15 million in my bank account. I went since 2018 without money i had to sell the house my parents that i bought them in new jersey just to afford it because i had went bankrupt i spent that money when i got out of rehab because i stopped drinking stopped vaping stopped smoking stopped going to massage parlor stopped having sex so my addiction became spending money again i spent the three you, you still vaping though I, i'm back to stuff now like i'm back to massage <laughs> i'm not perfect i'm not even going to meetings right now okay. i just don't drink okay you don't drink no you haven't drinking no because Bryce Hall going to knock you out if you keep drinking. I know. Are we talking about drink. that? Okay. So I can confidently. He's I can a bare fart, knuckle boxer. I fart? Yo, you fart. Not, no, 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 no. You've already fought twice. Twice. Third Three, time's th a charm? It's a strike, you're third out. Third time? No, third time's okay, okay, gone. Okay. Third time's I'll, I'll hold it. So I get all this money, right? What is Yusuf going to do? Let's look at his track record. He owned two Ferraris. He had a Range Rover SVR. Yeah. He had a diamond Rolex. He had multiple grills. He had a sex addiction. He spent all his money. First thing I'm doing with this money, I'm driving to San Diego to my parents' house live on stream. I'm writing my parents a check. I'm paying off their entire house in San Diego, which they've been struggling to pay. But my oldest brother, Mohammed, has been helping them because I can no longer help them. And I'm retiring them both with a very hefty check to both of them just so they can live the rest of their lives not worried. They can buy groceries. They could do everything and live happily. That's the first thing I'm doing. And I'm so, 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 like, obviously, you know, yeah. like, you can't like my, you biggest, need to buy a house too, bro. My biggest regret, all the, I'll tell you my plan for that. My biggest yeah. regret all these years is, um, when I had money, I didn't use it wrong. I found out later just last year, my dad, when my, I forgot who told me, do you know why your dad is so upset about you not listening to him and losing all the money? I said, why? Because when your dad was going to retire, he told everybody, Yusuf got me. Because I would give my dad $3,000 a week when I had money. Yeah. I was helping him. The fact that my dad was looking at me to be his security and I failed him as a man. Do you know how that makes me feel? So the fact that now I haven't told my dad how much the deal is. He's been too scared to even call me to ask because he has trauma from the first time I spent it. Yeah. Going to my dad, writing a check that won't bounce, giving him the money. Alhamdulillah, like I made yeah. it. And the house. You, 
So I extended the lease I'm currently in for six months because it's so great because I want to stack in the six months. I'll probably make, I forgot how much million, but I'll make a couple of million based on my deal, how the payment structures are. And then after the six months, I'm going to buy a house and decide, am I buying in Miami for yeah. better tax? Am I buying in LA? Where am I buying? And then the last thing I'm doing, I've always wanted to do this. I should have done this in 2011. Like I should have started FusiTube Entertainment. It's not going to be FusiTube now. It's going to be G7. That's the name. I'll tell you what G7 is. I want to fart so bad. I'm starting a G7 Studios. I'm flying <laughs> all the employees right now. By the way, all my employees, guess what? They were all fans. Everybody who helped me during the subathon was a fan from my Discord. Every single person. I'm flying them. We're setting a whole studio for them. They're going to work with me on payroll in the Fantasy Factory, the G7 Fantasy Factory. What, what city and I'm going to start here? signing people finally. Like, I should have signed you. If I don't know if you know this. We did have a contract together. You were paying me to boost your YouTube at first. After one week, you were so, like, focused and motivated and you know business and I don't. So we'd be working out and you'd be talking about money and we need to do this and we need to open up this. I couldn't take it that I said, Brad, I want to terminate this deal. You just do your own thing. I never received a single dollar from you because of that. I don't know if you remember. I do remember that. That was my biggest regret. Why, why, I have so many of those regrets. Why Why do you think you were like, like you, you did it, but you didn't fully do it? Because I didn't know how. All I wanted to be is talent. I never got the chance to just be talent. The reason I fucked up is because I was also trying to be a manager and a PR assistant and an accountant and all this shit. Yeah, all you know how many hats. people I put on in this industry? Yeah. And I don't say that to gloat. I say like, good, give them their flowers. Well, I've done it now at this point as well. For a yeah, lot of, of course. People, but so. do you see money from them? No. No, bro. No. I got fucked by one. I made a bad deal with another in the past. Um, now there's some that I, I just do because it's like it make it can make sense for me. But no, I don't see money. Really? For yeah. Well, what we should have done is Jake Paul, Team 10. He's the one who did it right. Sign all these people. They blow up. You're helping them blow up. Like her. She's my assistant. Yeah. Before she came to visit me, how many viewers were you getting? Um, I would average like 40. 40 viewers. Now but she... It didn't like correlate to like the support and money. Of course. Now she gets obviously like 800 viewers, whatever. Yeah. But not only that, she being around my brand and G7, she's the Natalie to my David Dobrik. Her stock went up. Her life has forever changed. So not only am I getting money from them and doing, but I'm putting them on. Bro, trust me. I get it. Yeah. I've done it. I, yeah. I'm a part of it. Yeah. Uh, I just get, it's like, I get hesitant because like for me to go and now sign more people, I want to do it. I talked with rice about this as well, but for me to, to sign more people, the hesitancy is in that these influencers seem to forget how much you do for them. And then when they get clout, they use it as like a, Oh, I can just pretend like I did this for myself and you're a bad guy. Yep. Like I've already experienced that. Yep. So because like, it's just, <clears throat> it's fucked because on the internet, it seems like it doesn't, matter that's why we talk about like can you be canceled can you this can you that because like people just believe whatever the fuck they want to believe but they, they don't always believe or hear the truth because these people who've ran their mouth about me like just make shit up so they look better mm -hmm. so that they can be like oh i'm justin being a piece of shit yeah. and so I, my fear is not so much in like signing the contracts and the right contracts that are like you can set all this up change mm -hmm. those things make mm -hmm. those things better but it's just genuinely in the fact that anyone could just go fuck you and then make it an internet beef. And then next thing you know, they're just getting clout that they're refusing to give you anything for now even further. Mm -hmm. And then they're just using you as of some course. sort of stepping That's stone. That's been happened to me. Been happened so are to you me sure? Like, way. and cause like, I, I, I want to continue to do it as well, mm -hmm. but I do have hesitancy in it. Well, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do anything sporadically. I have a team now that I have to run everything by like literal board members on my team. My biggest fan, Nadeem, who po invested all the money. He's not my partner. He's running the board of operations. So I'm going to run it by them and find out a way to structure it so I can get people on. But the problem is you can never structure someone on the internet. Meaning like if someone says, if someone goes bad on you, right? Mm. Let's say you sign me right now mm. and I go bad on you. I can just get on my podcast and be like, Fousey Tube's a piece of shit. He did this. He said that. He right. treated me like this. I make it, it all up. Have it in the contract. If no. you speak on me and do this. Doesn't matter. Really? Because because in, in California and in most places, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just lawsuits at that point. Mm. Where I could say whatever the fuck I want and mm. people are... The problem is this, people are gonna hear whatever they wanna hear and go, that's true, mm -hmm. because that person said it. 
then you go, oh, I'm going to sue you. And you go, okay, cool, sue me. There was then a, we just spent tons of a, money. There was a story after July 15th, right? I had given um, a friend of mine my Twitch channel. And I said, you can Twitch on this channel. Give me 30%. He didn't have a social media. I put him on. I said, I'll give you 30%. I mean, you give me 30%, you take the remaining. Just use the channel. Just use the channel. Yeah. While I'm in Bali. Who is this? I don't want to say. Okay. While I I'm think in I know who it is. While I'm in Bali and I bang my head through a glass window because all the stress that I was in, um, I come home and I log into my Twitch. I wasn't supposed to ever come back to Cali. That's the only reason I found out. I was supposed to live in Bali forever. I check my Twitch and I never knew Twitch. So I look at the back end and it says $15,000 withdrawn from your account. But the money was from before I even went to Bali. So it had been sitting in the account. Twitch does credit oh, card payments on the back end. Yeah. I call him. Yo, 15000 taken out. Where is it? I don't know, bro. Call him back. Yo, are you sure you don't know? I don't know, bro. Call him back. Yo, where is the money? Yusuf, are you fucking accusing me? How could you? What the fuck? I'm your brother. You think I'm going to turn on you like everybody else? Cool. I call Twitch. Yo, can you tell me where this was? Twitch, you could call at the time. Can you tell me where this was taken from? They give me the name of the bank account, his name. I call him. Yo, he starts crying. I'm so sorry. I'll pay you back. I apologize. I was in a tough spot. He goes to talk to my dad. My dad goes, listen, we're broke right now. We need this money. You have to find a way to pay Yusuf back. I swear to God, it's going to be my only objective. Da, 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 da. The next day, my dad's calling him, texting him. He's not answering. He sends my dad an essay this big. I will get a lawyer. I have video proof that Yusuf gave me the channel. Therefore, all the money that was sitting in the channel is mine. You cannot get me. You don't understand how much value I gave to Yusuf streams. I should have been getting paid from day one. Goes on Instagram, posts and says, I'm about to start my own Twitch now. About to show y'all who really runs this shit. Goes on to drama alert, posts a video on the internet that gets posted on drama alert when I was the most hated YouTuber and says, guys, Yusuf asked me to give him all the Twitch equipment back. He doesn't want me making money. Fuck Yusuf for two years because I didn't say a word because I couldn't reply on the internet because I obviously left the internet yeah. for two years. I got hated on for this incident. Two years later, I think when it was during COVID, I was broke. My face was swollen. I had pimples everywhere. My life was over. I tried drop shipping businesses. I failed. Something told me to do it. I call him in the car and I say, listen, I want to give you a chance to fly to LA to work with me on live streaming again. You work. You don't get paid. You work till you earn me my $15,000 back. Immediately he says yes. He's been waiting for this. He knows he fucked up. What, is, what does he say? What do I say? The one caveat you have to go live publicly and tell everybody you took that money from me. To that regard, even if that money was in there and you were still getting 30%, shouldn't he have given you 30% of the 15K? Correct. But his argument to my father in the text was, Yusuf gave me the channel, therefore everything that's sitting in it is technically mine. Did you ever see 30% from it? Not a single well, dollar. Well, listen, it's, it's all bullshit, man. The, the <laughs> thing that I, I get it, you know, it's people obviously in places where like they feel like it's something they need and there's some sort of desperation and like, obviously like I understand that. But do you that. see how literally when things were good and everything, but the second he found the opportunity to dismiss me, like you said, shit on me, go on the internet yeah. and the entire internet, believe me, <clears throat> the video is still up. Keemstar saying, holy shit, Yusuf is so broke. He had to take his Twitch equipment back. Cause I texted the guy after he sent my dad, the lawyer thing. I yeah. said, I want every single thing dropped off at my parents' house. Yeah. He goes and drops it off. And then goes off and says, Yusuf made me give all this stuff back because he doesn't want to see me making money. I goes to the store, buys Twitch equipment, and starts streaming. I just can't believe how, how like people just forget like the hands that you give them. Yeah. That's the thing that's so crazy on this whole like this whole social media space where people just literally forget what you do and how much you help them. Also, and that's what I don't understand. For 36 days on the subathon, I've done a lot of good things. I don't do it for praise. A lot of people are like, why do you record this? My life is 24-7. You can see that I don't have time to script anything. Everything is natural. I was at a cashier in Walmart. Somebody donated and said, give the cashier this 500. It was a $5 donation. I felt so bad. I gave him 500. 
There was a woman on the street. I took a picture with her son. She said, I should charge you $1,000 for taking a picture with my son. I said, what's your cash app? Sent her $1,000. There was a gardener working at my friend's house who watched me celebrate of hitting like a certain amount of subscribers. I sent him 500. I help people on the streets. I helped a homeless man. We put him into housing. We're doing a lot. I say that to say, you could do all these good things. The second you do one thing that doesn't meet their standards or gives them a chance to cancel you, none of that shit that you did matters. Yeah. The only thing that matters is the bad thing. Yeah, man. <laughs> Internet. Trust me, man. Internet. It's so fickle. And, and it's, you know how a, a, a priest told me one time? In Islam, we call it a sheikh, but you would call it a priest. He said, Yusuf, he said this in 2011. This is such a fire quote. He said, fame is like a staff that you use to walk yourself, like a cane. He said, when they support you and want you big, they support you and you're holding a wooden stick. But in a second, that same stick can turn into a snake and it's the same snake that's going to bite you and kill you. Yeah. That's so same. how do you think then you mitigate these things? Can you mitigate them or you just kind of roll with the punches? So the thing with me is I told you I have a very close connection to my audience. They have my phone number. They text me every day. Hold on one sec. I think he's going to tell them that. Can you tell them to go to the front? Yeah. They get into fights with each other like... And they text me, Yusuf, so-and-so moderator said this to me. I have to pull back that. I can't be so close to them and so personal and care about every single little thing. Yeah. I have to look at the bigger picture. Still be close. Still be there for them, but be there for all of them. Give one of them like a one-on-one -on -one time every time where everybody's watching it, but I can't be so close hands-on with it. Yeah. So how do you, how do you think you mitigate like – because. I'm assuming throughout your career, you've had, you know, people like assistants, people have come into your life that have like, you know, done you dirty along the way. How are you going to mitigate it moving forward? Cause bro, I've had, I've had the toughest time with people who feel like entitled or people mm. who feel like, I don't know. They just, I don't even know how to describe it, man. Like I've, I've just, I've worked and I've had like friends and I've had people come in and out of my life that like genuinely fucking hurt me the way that they, they, they've acted like, after the fact of not working. I was going to say, I bet you after the fact, all those people <clears throat> that you put on and take care of spread negative shit about you and Every said that you're better your name. Every single one, man. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, it's, it's such a crazy thing mm -hmm. because knowing when you're in it and seeing the people and seeing what they need. And then you hear all the things that are said, like, bro, <laughs> I literally have like, I'm on the phones with people and like, he's talking about how this person got connected with this other person. It's like, the same person who say I'm a terrible person to everyone mm -hmm. would be like, I'm talking to another person. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, when that person came to film videos with me, he said, I said the first time he met him, he goes, oh, yeah, I, I live with Brad. Let's film a video like using me to leverage me. The same person will say I'm a bad human. You know why I recently cut off a friend and didn't even tell him why I didn't even respond. Nothing before she flew out here. He calls her and tells her, yo. You're going to love Yusuf. I think you should get with him. He's going to try to get with you. He's a good guy, all this shit. That same guy, my friend, goes to her best friend and says, warn her of Yusuf. Tell him, tell her to stay away from him. Bro. He's going to manipulate her. He's going to try to have sex with her. She, what did he say? Basically that. Basically that. Yeah. Without Bro. even asking him, I just literally, I don't have time for it. I cut him out. Yeah, so that's that's a crazy thing, man. I've literally had people that I've known for years go and say things like that about me because they didn't didn't continue to get something from me that they feel like maybe mm. they were entitled to have or something. Mm. But like it's just the it's the craziest shit. I can't even I don't even know how to describe it. Like, so how do you how do you think you move forward in, in your career? You're you, not you're not gonna like my answer. Um, you just keep dealing with it. Contracts. Okay? Even I never with, had bro, contracts. I doesn't never matter. had contracts. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter. This yeah contracts here's the problem right you were right and i've done that i've made mistakes i've made shitty contracts that i was like fuck should have did that four years i made contracts that i did four years still got fucked mm -hmm. the contracts will not save you from what i'm talking about because what i'm talking about is the fact that someone can tell you to your face mm -hmm. on a contract yeah blah, blah blah next thing you know yeah oh yeah everything's good mm -hmm. just behind your back correct talking to her, say all oh, I this, say that do, say this say that all i can do is be myself through yeah. and through because my life is 24 seven. There have been a lot of things that have happened that people tried to twist on me. I say, hey bitches, go look at the re-recording. I have it on tape, I have receipts. Be who I am authentically on and off camera. I got banned for the first time in 36 days. It's the first time me and this girl had a conversation that wasn't on camera. At the end of the conversation, I'm not even gonna look at her. Kitty, was I the same person on camera that I was off camera? 
Yes. Oh, sorry. She's slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the hell? For the first time in my I, life, I, so I, I used funny. to have an assistant before. You know who? Yeah. I would be nice to her on camera. <laughs> Off camera, I would be a dick. Now, I'm more me off camera than i am on camera the camera is no longer like a facade it's just a representation of my life now so so because before it was kind of like that i guess it's it's i guess you're just more i'm just through and through i don't lie yeah um you want tea for your podcast the story i haven't told go ahead yeah happy punch promotions yeah no what one happened? knows no one knows this is keemstar this is keemstar no one knows what happened i come up with a concept because i was doing dana too back in the day for those of you familiar i was going around interviewing all the boxers yeah i remember that. I, I was the main promotion this is after for, you got beat up i was no i was the main promotion for social gloves yeah. austin's event yes i was the one i was wade plem before wade plem everybody loved dana tube so i came up with an idea after i did i our, think i i think i was one who made that name did you the dana tube yeah, yeah it wasn't me that was me that was you and then you just ran with it. I yeah. remember that shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Doesn't matter. So 30%. So <laughs> I didn't get any. What? You think Keem paid me? No, I want my 30% no, for did. that name. Listen, listen, listen. I know, I know. <laughs> Fuck it with you. So I um, I come up with an idea. Happy Punch Promotion. Did you come up with the name? Um, me and Keem were doing it collectively. But yes, if I look back, I think I had came up with the name. Okay. Um, we were We both did an event together and we killed it. My career doesn't have a good name. Keem is the number one business person on YouTube. He's been, he should have been canceled years ago. You can't cancel him. He's like Voldemort. Yeah, he's really in this bitch. Keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. Yeah, cause What did he... I do? What do I do with the guy who abused me for so many years, hurt me, tore me down, become his best friend? Why? When Keem is your enemy, he will fucking ruin your life. But when Keem loves you, he will ride for you till he fucking dies, right? So I chose to partner with him. Got an idea. Happy Punch Promotions will be the number one news media outlet for all these events. We'll head up all these boxing events and say that we'll do your commentary and promotion. Look at the numbers we have. Signed a deal with him. Did everything. Launched it. We had a manager at the time that I wasn't with, but Keem was. Named, I'm not going to say it, John. Couple of weeks into Happy Punch, we got somebody doing the Instagrams. We instantly became one of the most popping Instagrams on YouTube, Happy Punch Promotions. Um, I get an idea. I'm on YouTube at 3 a.m. in the morning. I find this kid named Dean the Great. Don't know if you've ever seen him box on Misfits. I've seen him since. He's yeah. fighting cops on the street, and he boxed three people at one time. I call Keemstar. Keem, I know how happy Punch is going to the moon. How? We actually become a promotional company and sign these boxers. We get a percentage of all their purses, and we put them in the biggest fights. Game over. He loves it. We start that. We signed Dean the Great. We saw Salt Poppy. Now we have a roster of the best influencer boxers in the world. I was busy for a lot of things, and Keem allowed me to be busy, right? But I'm still 50% co-owner, 50% shareholder. Still today? No. 50% everything. Um, I ended up, there was one time I had to go to rehab for something, so I had to leave that time. <clears throat> and then when I come back, it's time I, I get a I go to rehab for the Bryce Hall incident. Yeah. I get out of that. I then spend time on my sobriety. I don't have time to be focused on internet shit. I'm just focused on my health. Then I sign the Deji fight. Obviously, when you're in a fight, you don't have time to work, do anything. Your life 24-7, eat, sleep, breathe, is boxing. Training. Even if I lost, it's boxing. And I put my due diligence and worked every day. Um, so I didn't have time to do happy punch shit, obviously. Why would I be expected to, you know? I fucking, like, I'm going to put the team on. I'm going to be wearing happy punch on my clothes. I'm going to walk out representing happy punch. And if I get this win, our stocks go up. And he knew that. He would text me all the time. You have to win. I don't expect you to work. You have to win. You have to win, right? I lose. I come home. I have my nose broken. I have to do a nose surgery. I'm recovering. The landlord of the unit I was living in sold the unit, kicked me out, had seven days to go out, signed a new lease, moved all my stuff in boxes into my new home, still vulnerable from my surgery, hadn't had a single second to rest. Um, my ex-girlfriend found out she was fucking this other dude, 
Da -da -da -da. While she was fucking me, Tough. went through that breakup, still dealing it with her, going to therapy about her. Depression started. I went from being 5% body fat, I don't know how much I was, to now for the first time in a year, started eating sugar again. Every single night, crumble cookies, ice cream, Ugh. candy. So in 30 days that I spent recovering, I lost my body. I didn't even lose it by a lot. I probably went from 5% to like 12%. I don't know. But that little discrepancy fucked me up mentally. I stopped going to the gym, stopped being healthy. So I started slipping. I was basically holding onto the, the roof, but I hadn't fallen off yet. Keem then hits me up. Me and Keem had a guy that worked for us. His name was Perza, one of the best guys. He now works for Wade. And he was doing our TikToks and stuff. Perza got one of our YouTube channels accidentally um, demonetized. And he got another one banned for something hacked. Keem was livid. For punch? Happy punch. Okay. Keem was on the phone with me and this guy. And Keem is cussing him the fuck out. How dare you? How dare you? Keem is fucking. So I called the guy privately. Hey, brother. I'm so sorry for how Keem's talking to you. This isn't going to work out. I think it's best if you just leave the business. Pay us the half of the advance we gave you and be on your way. He apologized, said okay, called Keem back. Keem's out. Now we don't have the social media guy. So now Keem goes, Yusuf, I need you to be Dana Tube. What do you mean you need me to be Dana Tube? I don't want to be on the internet no more. I'm depressed. I'm going through shit. No, I've been working on this business the entire time that you've been training and didn't say a single shit. You were busy for a year before that. You haven't done shit for this company. I need you to be Dana Tube. I need you to interview all the boxers. I need you to fly out to people. I need you to do the YouTube content. I need you to do the social medias. Keem, we don't even have a team. I don't even, all my stuff is in boxes. I don't even have an editor. I don't have a cameraman. That's not my problem. You live in LA, find people. Keem, we need a budget to be able to pay these people. We'll work it out. Find, find the person, right? I'm like, what the fuck? I don't want to be Dana Tube, but I'm scared of shit of Keem. So I'm like, I have to. So um, I call my lawyer and I start talking and I say, and Keemstar, by the way, I'm not trying to start any drama with you. I'm just finally telling my truth. I've never told my truth. You could tell your truth, but I think I'm doing it due diligence. I said I didn't work for over a year. I said I was busy during the Deji fight, but everything after that, I think I'm telling with 100% sincerity and truth. I'm not doing it to diminish you. You've cared for me when nobody else did, but I'm just stating the truth because a lot of people to this day think I own Happy Punch when I don't. Um... So I, I don't want to do Dana Tube. So I call my lawyers and I call my mom and I go, guys, what's more important? The millions that I'm going to make with Dana Tube or my happiness? I'm not happy working with Keem. Great guy, but I can't. I just can't. You can't because you didn't want to do that role or because? The role and also because of just everything in the past. I was never healed from it. Yeah. I was close with the guy who literally made me want to kill myself. Yeah. I was in therapy I talking to him. Shit, I would literally dude. ask my therapist, why am I friends with my abuser? He made me want to kill myself. Literally. He doesn't give a fuck about he didn't give a fuck about me for so many years. Now he's my best friend. That's fucked up. Something yeah. was wrong with me. So I tell them I don't want to be in happy punch. We call Keem, we call John. Yusuf wants out. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you. The reason Happy Punch went to shit. Me and Keem were supposed to make money from all the purses. There was a problem. John, Keemstar's manager, who owns uh everything with Keemstar wasn't working with me so he was unhappy why should i do everything for happy punch when i'm only getting 20 percent well you're only getting 20 percent because you don't even manage me you manage keem and i'm still giving you 20 percent of happy punch that should be more than enough for you to work no i need more so i get a lawyer involved the lawyer talks to them and he goes well guys sorry to break it to you we can't you guys can't get paid anyway promotion promotional managers can't be managers as well promoters can't be managers so what is John and Keem's solution? Because they're making money 360 from everything else anyway. All right, fine. We won't take any percentage from the fighters. We just want them to rep Happy Punch and be Happy Punch fighters, and we'll do it that way. But I signed Dean the Great. Like, that's my guy. How am I not going to receive money from Dean? I want to manage his career. Sorry, Yusuf, we can't. So the money, I had zero income that I was supposed to be making from each fighter. They're getting paid 200000 100000 for each fight. Yeah. Saw zero of it. That's what fucked up Happy Punch. So then um, I don't want to do the thing. The lawyer calls Keem and John and goes, Yusuf's out. Keem goes, are you fucking sure? If you're out, you're out, but I need you to be sure. I say yes. The next morning, I woke up with regret. I call Keem back and John and my lawyer. 
I'm sorry, I was wrong. I'm going to do everything in my power to work hard and make you happy, Keem. I'm going to make you so proud. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to be Fousey Tube. I'm going to be Dana Tube. He then says, great, get in your car, go straight to the Austin McBroom face off with a Nissan Gib, record it, get a video up ASAP and do an interview with Slim. I rush with a broken nose, still taped, not even healed. I go, I, uh, I was supposed to do a face off with a Nissan Gib in Austin. They go, uh, a Nissan Gib goes, Yusuf, I'm focusing on my fight. I'm not about to do a face off right now. The fight's tomorrow. I'm sorry. I already told Keem. So I go outside and interview Austin on his own post it i go home my mom's sitting with me no cameraman no editor no nothing i record this slim interview i'm miserable i hate it imagine doing this podcast but you fucking hate it you feel like a sellout you're unhappy why were you feeling that way then i just i needed time to myself i wasn't ready i was not ready i hated it my mom saw me afterwards i started crying she said yusuf you got to leave happy punch i call back and i go i want to leave happy punch they go fine We've made, I think at the time when I left, we've made $100,000 up to this point. We're going to give you that $100,000 and we're going to give you 5% co-owner rights forever because you're a co-founder. They wired the $100,000. It went away. Obviously, I had so much that I had to pay for. So much. Even the lawyer fees to fix this was disgusting. So I lost all that anyways. Um, And So you still own the 5%. I'm going to give you another T after this about Jake Paul. So I do own 5%, but do you really think I'm going to see any of that 5% Keem? But let me tell you what happened now. So because I was so hurt afterwards, I slip into a depression that caused me to let go and fall. I go straight into a, I'm, I'm, I'm broken. I'm calling mental health institutions every morning, crying, smoking a Newport on my patio. I don't know how to handle reality. I don't know how to handle time. I can't have conversations with people. Time feels too much. I think I'm going to go to the bridge and jump. Please let me in. They put me into, they got me into one. I drive there with all my luggage. I'm so at a relief. I get in. Guess what happened? What? They check my insurance. It's midnight. They already cut off for the day, but I was in such a vulnerable state. They let me in because I could self-harm. They come back to me and they go, Yusuf, we checked your piss work. We found marijuana in your system. We can't can't admit admit you. you. Yeah. I smoked two weeks before out of a pen. I was losing it. I get in my car, call my sister. I'm crying. I'm screaming. I get a flat tire and on the freeway on the way home. About to end it all. I take an Uber, go home. I'm crying. Nura, I'm going to end it. It's over. It's over. It's over. King Batch, I don't know how it happened, ends up texting me, hearing what's going on. King Batch at 2 in the morning came to my place in L.A., sat with me, called a friend of his who lost a friend to suicide and made him calm me off the ledge. And got me to go to sleep that night. They found me a new mental health hospital to go to. And I went. I'm going to tell you a story about Jake Paul. But before I finish, I stopped talking to Keem after that incident. I ignored every call, everything. Went to the mental health hospital. It wasn't until like four months later I actually answered a call. And every time he called me, he would talk as if I still own Happy Punch. Yusuf, you're still owner. This is your baby. You came up with this. Everybody still thinks it's yours. You have to be uh, appreciative. We just signed Salt Poppy. He just knocked out this person. Our stocks are going through the roof. Keem, I own 5%. It's your business now. Stop trying to make me feel like I'm still owner. And he did it with good intentions, trying to, no, this is your baby. You still own it. Don't worry. Everybody knows. I got sick of it. The internet always tweeted me, oh, you're not broke, you own Happy Punch, you do this. Having to watch all the Misfits events, seeing all these people do my role that I came up with, seeing the Happy Punch fighters, seeing Keemstar on stage running the event, that was my baby. I was pissed. I was hurt. I was hurt. Um, So at the end of the day, um, I don't. So when Keem recently said what he said, I know me and him are going to be fine and we'll talk it out. But when Keem recently said what he said about the incident, that's why I tweeted and stood up for myself. And I said, brother, I didn't get banned for that. I got banned for this. And then I also said, um, and I don't own Happy Punch Promotions. Basically, stop saying that. Why 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 do you think it's in his interest to say that? Because um, he would always say on the phone. I hope you don't think that like I snaked you and took your business, Yusuf. I hope you know that you left me no options. I hope you know that you weren't working and I was forced to make that decision. Mm. He said I put him in a bad position, which I understand. So obviously he wanted to make me to feel good because he needed me. 
he, verbatim on the phone, he would say, I need Dana to back. Nobody can do what you do. You're the best in the game. When he kicked me out of Happy Punch and gave me the 5%, he said, the reason I have to kick you out is because I have to invest the money we're going to make into somebody who's going to do your job. Till this day, this happened in 2022, he never hired a single person to do online content, and he only has the same person who's doing Instagram. All I asked him before I got kicked out was, Keem, just keep me as percentage owner. Let me work behind the scenes like you. Let me do these events. Let me be the person who takes care of the fighters, like Dean the Great, who looks at me as an older you brother. Are, you, are, you are as a percentage owner. But guess what he said? Hmm. I already do all that behind the scenes. I don't need you. I need you to be Dana Tube. Mm. So I left. Yeah. Let me tell you one more story. I know I've talked a lot. No, it's fine. Continue. Is well, it, has this, this been long? No. no. Yeah, don't oh, worry. Don't worry. Fine. So what, wait, wait. So, okay. I got to fart so bad, man. Just stop, stop the farting. Please. So, no. So your relationship with Keem right now, what is it? Keem really cares about me. He always has cared about me. Um... He obviously regrets everything he's done to me over the past, July 15th. Um, exposed me for fake pranks as if I'm on a worse person. One time there was a picture of me talking to two fans. They Drama Alert photoshopped the picture, made it look like I'm in a, ho a, ho a hotel hallway soliciting two prostitutes. What? These guys ruined my life. Um, but the relationship, I, right now we're not talking because he took his girl's side and he was unhappy. And he said his justification was... I gave Yusuf got his 14 chance at life. I've been nothing but been there for him, trying to help him and everything. And now he goes and does this with this woman. I'm disgusted and I'm upset with him. Mm. So I'm not I'm not mad at him. I understand that's fair, but I am gonna tell my truth now. Yeah, I just wonder why he said that. Because he, why do you think he said that? Because his it's... girl took his his girl. I literally have the text message. My girl is so mad. She like she's like she's so angry right now. At what it what it looks like you did on the what internet. it looks like I did on the internet. Yeah, interesting. I love both of them, and I want yeah. them to know that. But that's just my truth. There's a difference between talking shit and telling the truth. Um, I'm the that's why guy. right now with my audience, they're always no matter what happens. This girl has fucked up so fucking badly, and what? The, it, <laughs> they don't allow me to even get mad because for them, it's Team Kitty. She can't do no wrong. What? I got a brand new Tesla. She scratched it on day one. Okay, okay. No, 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 she no, just no, got no. a flat tire in my Tesla. I had no, to Uber here. No, no, no. Swear to God. Okay, no. so, but like, I'm the bellboy. You got to understand. Like, I'm the bellboy. I, I take in Are every Are you a good bag. assistant? Yeah, I'm amazing. I'm very particular. I'm very on point. He thinks I sleep in, but he doesn't understand. There's We, have, we haven't yet established enough boundaries for us to like have set time for was, me to be away. Did, did, did he yell at you in the car? No, no, no. But to, he's told me today Fuck. that I need to wake up earlier. I woke up today. No, no, my no. My throat closed. My nose closed. I can't breathe. I can't get up. I can't find my vape. I can't get water. This girl wakes up at 12. I have to go in her room and be like, Kitty, I needed you. <laughs> yeah, but, but oh, I didn't shit. know that I would have had to be up at that time. Of course time. you didn't know. What? I have everything I'll scheduled. I'll say this about Kitty. She's the best thing that could have ever happened to my life. I love this woman with my life. And I told her from day one. We actually, in the first three days, you know how it is when you first meet somebody? We kissed publicly well, on live stream. Well, we love bombed each other. I go to Houston. We love bombed each other. I, have you guys had sex? No. I go to Houston <laughs> that next day. Guess what I do? Another girl kisses me. I kiss her. This girl in the audience. Fuck you, Sif. He cheated. All the shit. I'm like, cheated. I know this girl for three days. Relax. I fly home. All her bags are packed. She's on her way out. I turn off the stream. I go upstairs to her. I go, Kitty, I fucked up. I just met you three days ago, and everything that I said to you was genuine, and I did share a genuine kiss with you. This shit is moving so fast. I was in Houston. A girl kissed me, and I kissed her back. All this taught me was, I don't want to be with you. I don't want a relationship. It's much healthier if we were just friends. Yeah. I want you in my life forever, and I promise to take you up if I go up. I need you to stay. She contemplated it for a couple of hours. She came up to me. She said, I'm staying. Kitty, do you regret not leaving? No, I don't regret leaving. No, wait. I'm going to put right? her. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, you got it right. I'm going to put a Rolex on her wrist before I even spend a dollar on myself. I'm going to change no. this girl's life. I'm going to buy her a car. She trusted me. You will. So I'll say this. She takes care of me. She's Muffin's mom. She does all the girly stuff that I need. Help me pack Whoa, everything. Why do I need one of these? I paint but his when nails. It comes, no, Brad. When it comes paint to assisting... Like business wise, fuck. 
Yeah, it's tough. She's so like dumb. Love yeah. you. That's that's not true. That's so not true. That's not true. We have not established enough yet. Like we we haven't shared passwords. This is oh, all wait, developing. Wait, you want to know something? No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. Hold let on, let her talk. You okay. gotta understand that like the majority of our relationship has been live streamed twenty four seven. So the time I need to sit down with him to establish these boundaries and get things set oh, this to is have fair. this is super fair i haven't been able to even have the authority to do things or make decisions because they have not yet been established it's only been three days since this ban but he's been sick the one day he didn't sleep and today is the first day that i woke up with him and we kind of not have a with full me. day together. i sleep on the couch and they well, see that i on mean live like stream. woke up at the i don't same share time. a bed with her like yesterday, what happened yesterday when you, you didn't even sleep yesterday. Oh. So I had an alarm set to make it to what I was aware that we had scheduled, but he still yet has to learn that he needs to share his schedule with me. Can I say one thing? Yeah, of course. Go First ahead. of all, before we even walked into your house, we looked at each other and said 11 a.m. every morning is the one hour she gets to give me all the stuff I have to do. She gets one hour to tell me everything because my life moves too fast. Yeah, I get you. Two. We pack for my Toronto trip. She packs for me. I have an assistant now. She packs for me. We do everything in the house. We leave. We're driving. We go out to eat. I'm now flying to Toronto. I have a first class flight. I'm so excited. We're halfway to the airport. And I go, Kitty, is my suitcase in the trunk? No, I said you have your suitcase. <laughs> but in my defense, he took, I was carrying muffin. I was carrying my backpack. I had my purse. And I was holding like drinks and shit. Like I have two arms and I'm a fucking small female. Oh, can I curse on here? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a small female. Like I'm not your bellboy or your mom. I am going to assist you in every way I can, but you took the live streaming streaming backpack and that's it. Of course. That's you important. had the responsibility. Let me ask you this. Whose responsibility? Because everybody took her side. It's your fucking suitcase. It's this. I said, what the fuck is the point of an assistant? I know it's my suitcase, but whose responsibility <laughs> was it to put it in the car? Guess what ended up happening? Had to race home, get the suitcase, go to the airport. The traffic was so bad. Luckily, I had a scooter in my trunk. Holding my suitcase on the scooter <laughs> through LA traffic. Made it. Guess what she was doing in the car the whole time? Dancing to music. <laughs> what? You were. You told, me, you told me to stay in the car and continue driving. No, no, no. Okay, we need to hash this out real quick this is, right we gotta, now. You gotta, you, we got to sort this out. You can but never no, because I do want to hear your opinion on this Go as ahead. well. I said that we should not be going out to eat because what happened when he missed his flight to Chicago was we went to Korean barbecue and then we're late to the airport. He wanted to go eat and meet with people. And I was saying we should not because I want to be on point. That wouldn't have happened if we weren't in a rush. And also like you can't, <laughs> you also can't expect me to do every little thing. I am hitting every point. I am particular and I am very responsible, but be a man carry your own bag here and there that's what happened with the with the tesla incident i get that but had you asked me hey yusuf get your bag i would have known i didn't know it was my responsibility truly i walked down before you but you, you, carrying everything in the bag i yeah, had all you your bag i the had car, all his said hold on i gotta look, go up to get it i know I he's 33 years old but you gotta treat him like if here's an assistant apparently in this case because if you're not doing business stuff you gotta treat him like a kid well Correct. no completely understood but you also have to understand that was the first incident that's happened now i know okay fair now i that's know fair. that every time going forward i will double triple check that's fair another incident happened where i was washing his clothes and all oh, of his oh, wait, 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 this wait, is like wait, reality wait, wait. Watch this, no, watch say, this, say, watch, watch say, this, and watch no, how it no, no, turns no. on let to be say, my let fault. Me say, I'm not, I'm not turning nothing on you. All of his clothes were in the bin. He needed his laundry for the airport. He's like, can you wash these? I put whatever clothes were in the bin into the laundry. And by the time I'm going to put him into the dryer, I realize his wallet was in his pants. My Louis Vuitton wallet gets fucked up. But I didn't know that I need to check all of his pockets for every fucking article of... Everything or every, is my fault. I Everything. Didn't, it, I'm not saying it's your fault, but now I know You are a big-ass kid, bro. <laughs> but now I know, now I know going I forward... Fart. Now I know going forward, I will check all of his pockets before putting him into you the got, He's a little crazy and he's a kid. You know? No, I said it. I would yeah, say this in a, therapy all the time. Baby. I'm telling it, you. Literally, my text to my therapist would say... I'm 33 years old, but like a grown man, man, child. I didn't spend my 20s, my formative years taking care of myself and learning how to live a lifestyle. Yeah. The only problem is now I don't know how to be an adult. That's it. Yeah. You got to just, baby. as long as you know that. Yeah. But I'm a very nurturing person and like a natural healer and empath. All right, now so let's. 
let's say the good things about her because now we need this is like a real therapy she's right? amazing yeah um the most important thing that i like about her she doesn't let me like she doesn't like she'll 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 talk back that's good i hate when somebody lets me walk all over them yeah but i could say like kitty what the fuck there was a clip on stream <laughs> she came up to my face I, I, I do laundry, I do this, I do that, I do this, don't you dare disrespect me. I went downstairs and I was like, that was the hottest thing she could have ever done. <laughs> One thing though, and you'll, you'll relate to this, because what yeah. I texted you earlier. At first, I had a hard time doing discerning this because I obviously, as the G7 leader, I expect G7 behavior. Is G, what, so G7, is that because of the phone? Close your eyes. Whoa, 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 what are you going to do? I won't do? touch you. Close your eyes. Okay. Trust me. Close your eyes. Okay. It's game seven of the NBA finals. Bradley okay. Martin is playing for the, uh, playing for the G7 uh, Risley Bears. There's so 0.4 Grizzly. seconds left on the clock. The coach draws up a play and says, Bradley, the ball's coming to you. What are you doing in that moment? Tripping on your shoelaces and falling or making the shot and making a parade in your city? Oh, I'm winning. Then you have a G7 mind state. It's like Mamba mentality the sickest audience name I've ever had because it's a, I'm selling a mindset. I'm not selling them this, that, or the other. I'm selling them a mindset so they can better their own lives. I say that to say out of a G7, everybody who works with me, I expect excellence. Yeah, you can't be excellent, but you can strive for excellence. So that's why everybody I expect like to be here. And if you can't be here, that's fine. Just go to somewhere that allows here because G7 only allows here. Yeah, I get it. You got to respect it. Yeah, that's for sure. And she, she is. She's G7. She's the G7 lady coach. I love her. What's the hardest part about working with him? Yeah. Um, he he. Erratic. Tell him about the fight. No, it's just it's very everything's very impulsive, like yeah. and, and chaotic. Like I'm a I'm a huge organization type person. Like I've been. Today was the first day that he has said like every morning you we need to sit down and say what's going on for the day, but I've been trying to do that every single day. Um. So just like communicating is hard, but it's just hard to navigate right now because of the live streaming and the content and everything's crazy and we're still figuring this out. Yeah, because so, how are you going to communicate live stream? Exactly. It's hard. You got to like get off camera. Yeah. Yesterday, um, my whole team advised me to be off the phone, not because of the drama, on top of the drama because they wanted me to rest. I hadn't slept since I landed in Toronto. I just signed a multi-million dollar deal from Kick. Not signed officially, but got the deal. I'm obviously on a high, so I stayed up all night. She was yelling at me all yesterday. Give me your phone. Get off yelling. your phone. You can't do this. You have to rest. Da, da, da. So that's what I think that's the hardest part for her. When And I, I told her, too. I said, listen, if you're going to work here, sometimes you have to trust me. I messaged Tristan Tate. Tristan Tate is an ally. Yeah. He messaged me when everything happened. And I sent him a message. Do you have my phone? No, I could get it. Okay, I want to show you what he said. Well, let's talk about that for a second before you get into what he said. What, yeah. what did you think about the fact that I think they've got removed from house arrest? Now they're... Um, yeah, yeah no. you just farted again. I didn't. Yeah, you did. That was muffin. That wasn't. I said, well, look, why she, she moved away? Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. What was your question? No, why'd you fart again? I'm sorry, Brad. I have a lot of That's gas. That's third time. I though. need to start doing colonics. Do you want to end the podcast? I have a Jake Paul story for you. I have a Jake Paul <laughs> story for you. A good okay. one. It's we'll hear that go in a No, but okay. Let's talk about Tate real quick. Tate yeah. the Tate Brothers. Oh, my so, God. I have hella text. Um, so I, it's just interesting to me how it's, I don't know. It seems like. Can I call Dean the Great? He call. just texted me. Hey, Ninja, why I got kimchi, his girlfriend, come showing me that you like all her naked pics on Instagram. You like all her naked pics. I don't give a fuck about Instagram likes, but when it's your girl or the bitch you fucking, whatever, it's bro code not to own or entertain that type shit. Me personally, for example, like your ex followed me. I don't follow back like her post. I just don't move that way. Um, You good? This kid causes me so much drama, bro. He texts you that? I swear to God. Yeah, he pressed you. <laughs> he pressed you on text. That's hilarious. He's not going to answer now. I hope he answers. I got to unfollow her. Where the fuck is her Instagram? But It's her fault. Why is she naked on my fucking Instagram? Because you follow her. I followed her to show support, and I don't like anybody. I scroll, and I like it like this. I don't look at a single post. I just like to show people that I supported them. Dude, <laughs> I like the new Yusef, bro. Right? Yeah, he's good. Good. All right. Um, what was your question? Sorry. So <clears throat> you saw, obviously, the Tates are there. They're off house arrest. Now, yeah. Right. Um, 
did you did you ever doubt them? Um, I don't know the details of who what Andrew and Tristan Tate did. I'll be yeah. honest. Yeah, but. I know Andrew and Tristan Tate as people. Just like I can say, I love Kanye West's music, but I don't know Kanye West as a person. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I know Andrew and Tristan for what the clips that I've seen and what they do, but I don't know for what they've done wrong. And from what they say and what they do, I love them. Yeah. I, I look at them as like fought, like older brother figures. Yeah. They treat me how to treat brothers. They treat me how to work hard as a man. They treat me how to... So I, I messaged Tristan and I said... Hey, Tristan, I received a very large kick offer last night. I stayed up all night working. I haven't slept. I've been flowing. You know when you're in the flow state? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone on my team is forcing me to stop tweeting and talking. What do you think? Thank you. Don't stop. I received the same advice. Let, let it blow over, LOL. Look how I've changed the narrative and become bigger than ever. Fuck anybody trying to slow you down. Stay loud. That's my advice. Let me see. <clears throat> that was Tristan Tate telling me, fuck you and your advice. Saying, fuck you and your advice? Fuck you and your advice. Yeah, fuck he you. He told me not to listen. He said to specifically you. you. Swear to God. Really? Your yeah. name. He said, fuck Kitty. No Don't way. Don't listen to her specifically. Get the fuck out of here. No, he didn't say your name. Just <laughs> in he general. He didn't say, Don't listen to you. That's why I didn't listen to you. But in general. So, yeah. Um, they, I, I, I watched like all their YouTube videos of just them being them. Yeah. So, I don't care about the drama. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And I can't speak on it. It's ignorant. And if it's wrong for me to be saying this, I'm sorry. I don't know. No, no, no. But I watched them as people and I fucking loved it. Yeah. I saw how you should treat a friend. I saw how you should run a business. I saw how you should treat the reality when the Matrix tries to cancel you. Yeah. It's it's, it's the whole thing's so interesting how there's just like it, it's it just seems like people at that level, at that level of popularity is like it's better to make them look bad than let them look good. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. cause like what you're talking to, like, obviously you can't speak to directly all the things that may or may never have happened in their whole, like their, the accusations and the case bullshit. Yeah. But <clears throat> you can't really speak directly to like the benefits that you, you're talking about receiving from them. Meaning like the things and the content that you're like, yeah. Oh, this is really helpful to yeah. me and helpful to young men. And like I'm sure there's people general. who hate Fousey, for but sure. they've seen a clip of me say something that touched them and they're like, I don't like him, but I appreciate what he said here. Yeah. That's all. I just think it's interesting how it's, it's, I don't know, like that type of. Uh, but also, Tristan didn't have to follow me. He followed me. He didn't have to tweet me when I said the N word. He tweeted me. Yeah. How and and that that N word thing? Why did you react so crazy? Because you're just afraid of getting canceled. So because I was on a podcast, I filmed a podcast with Steve. Mm -hmm. Me and him are going to start a podcast together. Oh, fire! Yeah, just can't be on YouTube. It's going to be on X. Of course. Shout out Elon Musk. Amazing, amazing platform. I love Twitter. They're paying crazy. Uh, they are. It's insane. So. Uh, I, we were on a pod and, and Steve said one of the funniest things ever, man. He said he saw you say that mm -hmm. and he thought of Kim Jong-un. Okay, let me explain why. Let me he explain followed why. me, by the way, after it. But yeah, he, why? Explain why. Because he, he was saying how like, it was like when he said that to me, I just started laughing because I was like, where the fuck did that come uh -huh. from? But he basically was saying that like, you know, he, he didn't think that the black community would be so mad that you would say that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like in the way that you said it. It's not, it's not like you said it like, you weren't saying it in a derogatory, you were singing a song. And at the same time, like, why, like, why did you react like that? Cause it was, so I, not dictators. I you was know? still on the high of my subathon and I was doing everything good. I'm sitting on my couch late at my bed late at night. And I go, guys, let's have a moment together. I wanted to listen to J Cole love yours together about appreciating your life. I wanted to decompress. So I'm playing it. I'm multitasking. All of a sudden a word that hasn't come out of my mouth since maybe I was 13 years old slips out and I feel it roll. Be honest, you say it all the time. I swear to God, I don't. <laughs> my mom. You say it all the time. When I you sing it. 13. When you sing, you sing the no, songs. In your car by yourself. I change it to brother, Arab, or streamer. And it works with every lyric. Um, I feel like you get the pass though, bro. They, Kai gave it to me. I feel like, but I feel like you get the pass. Kai bro. gave it to me, but I'm still not going to use it. But listen, when it came out, my mom, everybody just heard her on stream make me promise her. My mom said, Yusuf, I can't go through another like meltdown from you. Oh, uh, okay. I need you, you to do that. good. She goes, I can't handle it. I imagine the call with my mom that I'd be calling with her saying, mama, I just got canceled. I said the N word. It's over. I have to ah, do Uber I now. I immediately went to there because the internet treats me unfairly when I do stuff because I allow them. Yeah. So I thought it was over. So but you it, I overreacted, hyper. Not even overreacted. I reacted genuinely. I yeah, cried. No, no. I thought I fucked up. I was under yeah. a lot of stress from the subathon already. I was doing a million things at once. And then I just did that. I just saw everyone's reaction was like, 
Why that are no you one cares. Like Everybody that? in the streets who sees me goes, ah, you said the N-word, huh? But they say it as a joke. All right. the black people who come up to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I'm telling you, I saw the people's reactions. I saw the clip. I was like, bro, what you the fuck, You got to remember, dude? my sister became a lawyer at Berkeley Law School because she didn't want to support people who were guilty because she's too good of a person. She became a civil rights activist for Palestine. Now she's a university. She's a professor at a university. My sister uses a, her voice to abolish racism, abolish uh, prejudice, abolish discrimination. She wants justice. So you got to look at who my family is. My mom raised me well. I don't do shit like that. Yeah. Not even for content. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, your reaction was hilarious to me. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That shit, that, Welcome to the subathon. Every day something uh -huh. happens. No, it was amazing. It, it, it's, I, I tomorrow, know. when I start it live again tomorrow, I'm probably going to be kidnapped by the cartel or something. No. They can come get you for your watches and shit. <laughs> they heard about the 15 million. Yeah. Kid deal. <laughs> They're coming for you, dude. Um, man, we got to do something together. That would be fire. Because I do really want to start. I don't, I'm not going to do 24-7 like you. There's no way I can yeah. even do it. But oh, I, do I, wanna, ha I have an idea. I want to start streaming like... I have an idea. That's going to let you stream 24-7. No, I can't. I have an idea. No. I have an idea. 24-7? I'm glad I'm saying it here because I want them to know where the idea comes from when it happens. I promise you it's going to change the game. Promise. I'll, we'll talk about it off camera. Right. But I do. I love, I love it, bro. But it's I want to so work fun. with you in it. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me tell you the Jake Paul story and then be on my way. Yeah, what's the Jake Paul story? What does the internet, the hateful internet, think about Jake Paul? I mean, it's divided. It's divided like a people like, oh, they want to see him lose. They think he's whatever, this and that. The problem child, right? I like Jake Paul, man. People think I don't like him because of the shit that I said about him getting memed. And like, mm -hmm. I think he's fucking crushing it. Oh, yeah. Logan Paul just, yeah. can I talk about, have you talked about that yet? Yeah, well, I've talked about it. Not, not, well, basically this is where it was at now. It was like, Logan, I said all the shit that I said to Logan. Yeah. Like, you know, you did this for views. This is for views, period. Because you're saying I'm doing lame shit for views. Yeah. But you're doing this for views. Yeah. And then I ended it with like, yo, just come fight me in front of my gym. Fuck views, fuck money. I'll just fight you if you really think I'm that lame. Mm -hmm. No response. And then I get Jake saying, we'll pay you to fight this guy. A different guy? Completely different guy who I've never oh, heard of. And then I Googled stupid. and I was like, this is like a crazy UFC that's fighter. Stupid. Right. That was the response was deflection for. Logan likes UFC so much. Why not do a wrestling match? I'm not talking about wrestling. I want to do a UFC Why not fight? do a wrestling match? Oh, you would do UFC? Yeah. Wow. That's wow. what I'd want to do. Okay. But like, I don't, I'm not interested in fighting for a million dollars. No, a wrestling, a like, uh, UFC fight would be fire. But like I get even what you're if, I, Even if I just did a, f I'd fight him for free. Yeah. You know oh, I saying? know you. I know you. And I always tell everybody, like, if you guys saw one time, I forgot who it was in the gym. I think it was Bryce Hall before I even knew Bryce. He tried wrestling you, but you got mad. Like what you did to Vitaly. Like was, people test I, your I was, kindness. But I was nice. I was when nice. when people test your kindness because you're big and kind. And you see that, like when Vitaly did that thing to you. Yeah, but I was nice to him, And you had to, to him, say, bro. hey, little man, sit down. I mean, I hit him, but it was like a, it was like a reluctant, I don't really want to yeah, hit this guy. Hit. But I'm, what I'm saying is you're dangerous. Oh, I, I know that I know that I'll hurt someone. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. What's your uh, weight class? Are you heavyweight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 260. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you got to ask the weight. No. story, because we got to yeah, go. Yeah. We got to go. This has been an amazing podcast, yeah, by the way. It. Our synergy is always so good together. It's been that way. Thank we literally you. like 10 years back. Yeah, yeah. Like, actually. Yeah, so check so, this out. Yeah, tell us about Jake. Internet hates Jake Paul, whatever. Let me tell you who Jake Paul is as a person. I'm about to expose the fuck out of him. In a good way, I bet. I don't care. I'm about to expose the fuck out of him. I don't think Jake he's Paul. a terrible person, man. I don't care. I'm going to expose him. Do Can it. I? It's your podcast. Go ahead. Do whatever you want. I'm, can I say suicidal on this stream or no? Should I say I was about to end myself? Yeah, whatever you want to say. I was about to end my life. I called Nakisa, Jake Paul's boxing manager. Yeah. He took me to the Tupac exhibition. He really likes me. And I said, brother, my life is over. I gave him the whole spiel. I was crying outside of the gym. I said, it's over. Is there anything you can hire me to do? He goes, I'll look into it. A couple of days later, I get a call. Haven't spoken to this guy in ages. He doesn't know me. I haven't supported him publicly. I get a call from Jake Paul. What's up, Yusuf? How you doing? I'm not doing good, Jake. The Deji fight really fucked me up. I lost sense of who How long ago was this? By soon after the Deji fight? Yeah. The, the, this, this call happened, I want to say December. Okay. So this past year? Yeah. Okay. Um, I might got the timelines wrong because I got rejected from, I don't know. But um, I got a fart again. Bro, four farts? I swear. Jesus can I do it Christ. just to do four? Oh, my God. Just to do four. Bro, can I do it? At this point, fuck it. You're gross, <laughs> okay. dude. Now I'm going to have to sanitize oh, the fucking couches, bro. Yeah. All You're right. a sicko. Go ahead. So Jake Paul calls me. 
and he said, "Fuck you, just kill yourself, pussy." No, he, 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 I, dude, he's. I don't think he's a bad person. He talked to me about his bankruptcy. Yeah. He also talked to me about what he went through after his boxing. He also talked to me about what he went through. We just talked. I said, Jake, and this is a true story. I said, you know what's so crazy about you being on the phone with me right now? He said, what? I said, I did a ketamine infusion about a month ago. Ketamine for depression. Yeah. I go, during my trip, I don't know why, but you just kept pinging in my brain. I swear to God, my mom. You kept pinging in my brain. I kept seeing Jake. Jake How long Jake. prior to that conversation? A month was before. It? Okay. And I go, and now you're here calling me. He goes, that's the universe, bro. Yeah. Um, I then tell Jake. And Jake, I think he, I don't know if people, I don't know how much he really talks about it, but I could tell based on stuff that I've seen and people who are around him that he is a lot more tapped into that than most people. So much. Yeah. I've, um, I've always wanted to talk to him about it. He goes, he goes, um, a week later, he goes, I call him and I go, um, Jake, I'm about to off myself. I'm done. And I was. And he goes, I know the best therapist in LA. She's more like a life coach. She works at this hospital. You have to talk to her. He connects me with her. She FaceTimes me 8 p.m. one day. I'm crying my eyes out telling her my story. You know why I found out? Because we all know what happens to you in life, but a lot of people don't figure out why it happens to you in life. Why do you think I did the boxing fight twice even after I got my ass beat so bad the first time I was traumatized from it and embarrassed from the internet? Why do I think you did it? Yeah. Because you haven't learned the lesson yet. My father, I never had a connection with my father growing up. It was always just, hi, how much money are you making? Good. No, I love you. No, how are you? The only way I ever related to my father was sitting down every Saturday and watching boxing pay-per-view and talking boxing to him. I wanted to do a boxing match to make my dad proud of me and me to win so I can raise my hand. The first time my dad saw me fight, he was front row. He saw my nose broken. He doesn't know how to handle stress. He was really angry after the fight at my trainers. Why the fuck didn't you train him better? Why the fuck didn't you stop it after one round? Why'd you let him go four rounds? My dad saw me get my ass beat. This was a chance to make my dad proud. And the therapist helped me understand that and I start crying, crying, crying. Anyways, I tell her I need to go to a mental health hospital. I can't afford it. On his own, she relays it to Jake on his own. She calls me back and goes, Jake is going to pay for your hospitalization. We don't want you saying anything. He just wants to do it to help you. Jake Paul paid and saved my life when nobody was in my life. Jake fucking Paul yeah. paid for me to go to a mental health hospital and saved my life. Not a single person knew. He didn't ask for a thank you or nothing. It gets even better. We've kept in contact. This week, obviously, I'm going crazy on the internet. On his own, on his fight week, I hadn't texted him in God knows how long. Jake Paul texts me and goes, proud of you, brother. You're doing amazing with through electric emojis. On his own. The guy's a good guy, yeah. a really good guy. He believes in mental health. He believes in giving back. He believes in helping people. He's just misunderstood. Yeah. I mean, that's how it is. Yeah. Man, that's huge. Huge. Lots of respect. And I'm glad I finally got to give him his flowers. Damn. I love that, bro. I gave you two T. I love that. Yeah. I like that one. That's my yeah. favorite. Yeah. That's, that's some real shit. And that's, that's the thing. Like, no one, no one fucking, that's the crazy thing about this industry and like this, all this social shit. Like, people would way rather highlight all the negative shit. It's oh you just farted five fucking times in my podcast. <laughs> I could have done ten. If That's you, fucking if insane. You, met me earlier. you know how many times? You really are a day? sick fuck. I'm sorry. And you want to know what's crazy? Before this subathon, I swear to God, my number one rule on live streaming was I do not fart in public. That's rude. You probably rip disgusting. ass on your live stream all the time. All the time. I put the camera right next to my butt and I fart. I swear to God. Dude, people probably there's some people who probably like that too much. Oh yeah. There's definitely some you know why? Who, For some reason, farting is like the universal laughing language. When you fart, people just laugh. So when I'm in Macy's and there's a woman right in front of me and I put the camera on my butt and I fart, they love it. Bro, I feel like motherfuckers are just like sniffing their fucking screen. How many times have you got pink eye? <laughs> yeah. I wake up with pink eye every day. Yeah. Oh shit. We have eye drops all we around. Do. The house. We do. Bro, you guys are fucked. But like we'll be laying on the couch, like literally like my head here and Oh my god, Just dude. That's that. six fucking times, dude? I could have done more. Dude, get... Why do you have so much gas? Because I haven't been eating good. I haven't been prioritizing What the fuck health. are you eating? I, I went from an animal-based fucking... diet. I went from only eating uh, fruit for my carb sources and sugar sources, 
protein for my sources and avocado and eggs for my other sources. I went from that to last night. I had a pint of gelato. Bro. I had a bag of ve uh, vegan chips. I had candy. By the way, can I promote my fitness app? Yeah, do whatever you want. Remember that fitness app I asked you if I should do and you yeah. gave me advice on it? Yeah. I released it. Yeah, do whatever you want, bro. It's Guys, if you, well, it's actually, it's kind of hard saying it to Bradley's audience because you obviously follow Bradley. But if you'd like <laughs> to see my fitness app and get a seven day free trial and see the programs that I did to get into shape and the meal plans I did and watch running videos and ab videos and get running routines, www.fitbybussy.com. Enjoy. Bert, anything else you want to plug? G7. Twitch.tv backslash Fusi. Kick.com backslash Fusi. Gonna live stream this entire year, every single day. We're ending this year in the Maldive Islands together. Yeah. That's fire. I wanna plug my Twitch so bad. Come, Twitch. come with us. Come with I us. I wanna plug my Twitch. Yeah. Twitch.tv slash Bradley Martin. Yeah, you you made a channel? I've been having a channel. I just, I just, I just not consistent with the posting. But, but I gotta do it. Yeah, yeah, but I have an I, idea for him. To, I got a whole setup. I have an idea for him to uh, blow shit up. It's going to blow shit up. Okay, so also at the end of every episode, we're going to do this now. We've, we normally did this for Raw Talk for a really long time. We'll, I know you guys got to go, so we'll ask this one question. We normally ask around like three questions at the end. Ask of whatever you want. We have yeah. to be there by 7. It's 5.15. Okay, so at the end of every episode, you guys want to ask your questions, ask Raw Talk at gmail.com. I'll answer the questions. That was, that was a big seventh one. fart. That That's was a big the eighth one. fart. This is insane. Yeah. You have a literal problem. Like, oh, yeah. I wish there was a microphone. I used to get farts. colonics. You know, I used Can to I get do? colonics yeah, for I, my gas. Oh my God. I believe you. So, uh, Jacob, do you have any questions back there for us? Okay. So Jacob's getting the questions. Okay. You, you, we need a microphone for your fucking farts. Uh, but yeah, ask at gmail.com. If you want us to answer your questions, also subscribe to the channel right Yo, now. Yo, Can I send a voice note to Dean? Yeah. Send him a voice. note. Watch this. Yeah. Dean, my brother, I love you. I called you because I'm Bradley Martin's podcast and I read your text out loud to expose myself. Brother, I followed your girlfriend and you know this. Ugh, that fucking fart smells, bro. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I followed your girlfriend to support you. I don't look at her posts. You know that. All I do is I scroll through my posts. I like every single picture that I follow. It's, I don't know that your girlfriend's naked or whatever. I just unfollowed her. I apologize. But Dean... This is like the third time in a week you've texted me about like something you're unhappy with in our friendship. So if you need a little space from the friendship, if you need a little time off, take it. I'm sorry. Um, I'll do better. You cool off and we'll be friends later. I love you. This is the third time in a week he's tried to like break our friendship. So I'm like. Like what's good. Yeah. Yeah. You guys just need to communicate. You got to stop like a bikini he, he photo. Yeah. Side. Yeah, I saw that. No, you because, know what's crazy about No, it was miscommunication. I was in a video on Twitch and I did a street boxing event and I said I just found I the, saw that by I the way. I said I just found the next Dean the Great and I'm not gonna fuck up like I did with Dean. Dean obviously took it to say, What do you mean fuck up? Fuck you, what are you trying to say? I was uh, like, I'm trying to say I should have managed your entire career. I see. You know what's crazy about the liking pictures thing? Is literally yesterday you were like, I've just been going through Instagram. Like he, what he does is he'll sit on his phone. He's not even looking. He just likes the entire feed just to stay relevant and like in just, the algorithm. Not, just to show the creators that like they like all my pictures. I support you too. But I, I genuinely don't not scroll even, through social media. Not I don't even give a fuck. reading, not even seeing what it is. Like he literally, don't like care. I watched him. He just likes, it's likes, the game. likes, likes, likes. It's like imagine he just specifically goes to her page and likes <laughs> all her Play photo. the game to change He's the like, game. He's like, I don't know how this feed is just her profile. What the fuck's <laughs> going on? Play the game to change the game. I didn't even know it was her. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so we got some questions, Jacob. Um, someone asked, do you think the saying just as fast as they come is just as fast as they'll go? True. 100%. Interesting. 100%. Yeah, yeah, like with money, with people, with everything. Yeah, I, I think with everything that's true. Yeah. Because like, I think the thing, the reason why that's so true is that like working for something, it shows you how to keep it. Like you learn how to keep it. You learn how to harness it. Instead of just like, oh, I got it like this. It's going to go like this. That's normally how it is because in the time you take to earn it, you start to understand the importance of it instead of just like, oh, I just have it and it's gone. That's why I think people like, you know, don't understand the value of what's given to them sometimes because like a lot of times when things are just given, like they, they, they'll fuck it off. You know, yeah. like even speaking to you, like not that you were just given what you were given at some point, but it came so fast and like, you know, the timing of your life and the relevancy of like the YouTube and mm -hmm. the like, you got so much so quickly that I felt you kind of didn't know how to mm -hmm. handle it and it, you fucked it off. Yeah. 
You no, know? they always say, they say it's a marathon, not a sprint. And if you get something fast, you're going to lose it just as fast, you know, as fast as it comes, as fast as it goes. But what I say to that is it's not about getting on. It's not about getting noticed. Anybody can do that. The hard part really starts not when you're at zero trying to get on. The hard oh. part starts when you get on and staying on. Oh, yeah. Jake Paul has this, uh, Jake Paul, Jake, Jake Cole has a line and it says, um, um, something about I'm trying to stay on, get my fucking buffet on. Like he's not trying to just do this for a minute and leave. So yeah. now, now that I got the deal, I can now change my pace because I was running on a sprinter's pace. That's how you burn out. Now I'll be doing a slight 4.5 on the treadmill jogging and sprint every once in a while. marathon sprint every once in a while yeah. and just coast. Yeah. The good life. The good join life. me. The good life. <laughs> join me. I finally feels like to be what it feels like to be a creator now. Yeah. Good man. Okay. Next question. Uh, there's one that says when you're on your, well, I guess, yeah, it says when you're at your deathbed, uh, what would be your biggest regret and what would you do to change Beautiful it? Beautiful answer. Question. Fuck. That is such a good question. I Who just made that? that up. Oh, you, I made these up. Oh, sick. I have one. You go. Wow. You go That's a, that, you just made that up. Well, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have any questions. So I'm just, okay. Listen, it. you motherfuckers need to start emailing us questions. Ask raw talk at gmail.com. We need your questions. Jacob is bootlegging these questions yeah you guys can't be g4 what the fuck yeah. g4 when so i rank people based that's on their G4 performance shit. that's some g4 shit okay do better y'all well, that was a fucking amazing do question fucking better y'all um, it was uh what was that she said that was a great question can you repeat it though well, uh, I, I heard the part of him asking what would your biggest regret on the deathbed be well if, when you're at your it. deathbed what would be your biggest regret and what would you do to go back and change it okay um my biggest regret when i'm at my deathbed is um oh i was gonna make so many jokes right now <laughs> probably the guy the, the the guy the italy guy oh no 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 that's not i wouldn't say this is a regret i'm at fucking all. with you i'm fucking <laughs> with you <laughs> that was a that was an accomplishment okay um <laughs> <laughs> so i think being too fo focused hyper focused on what people think about me i think that's still something i struggle with and i think that kind of like um is why I've made so many bad decisions rather than doing things for why I wanted to do them. I was always doing things for how it looked or how it would be perceived. Mm. And it made just my whole perspective foggy and jaded. Still to this day, I think I like that's that. something I work on. Um, and then to change it, I would just learn to be more present and um, do things that make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's eight, nine, ten. I'm a sharded. Oh my god! Which I, I did do. on the subathon. I did, <laughs> and they saw it. Bro, it's disgusting. Uh, okay, you can continue. I, yeah. I was just gonna say I would just do more things to make me happy. Um, yeah. For why I want to do them rather than how they look on social media. Yeah, I yeah. have a good answer. If I yeah. may. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll go first. You're okay. probably pretty good. Yeah. Are you holding your own? Yeah, post? it's really bad. Okay. Um. I would, I mean, this is such, it's such, there's so many things I can think of, like, not, not that I regret, but I think, uh, I think I would have wished that at times in my life, if I'm just looking back on my life, like if my deathbed was today, I kind of similar to what you were talking about. I wish I was better at, um, drawing boundaries, mm -hmm. like drawing boundaries for myself that, that didn't allow me to either be taken advantage of because of like my kindness or like my willingness to give, yeah. um, and that would allow me to, at the same time, draw my own boundaries. It allows me to better see where I should or should not kind of place my effort and my energy and my love. Yeah. And I think if I, if I look back on my life, that's, I don't have regrets in it, but I know that because that was so kind of like guilt given too willingly in places that a lot of people were able to, to take from that energy and take from that love and in, in ways that were just not reciprocal or not good and not like with good intentions. And mm -hmm. I just kind of found myself in situations where I'm like, fuck that happened again. That happened again. That sucks. Yeah. You know? That's really so, draining on your energy too. Yeah. Draining as fuck, man. So that's something I would do different, mm -hmm. but yeah. I don't necessarily regret it because I also learned so much from it. What yeah. about you, Mr. Cell phone? All right. So I'm sorry. Those first time no, on you're the phone. Fine. Um, you're fine. Tesla went and fixed my car. Good. That's sick about a Tesla. Um, I've said a lot of things on your podcast. I think what I'm about to say here is about to touch the most lives I've ever touched. There's a lot of things that are going to go viral on this podcast, obviously, but never the important shit goes It's viral. never going to be this, yeah. So I hope it's this. Yeah, I hope it is too. My favorite motivational speaker, one of them, 
once said, imagine being on your deathbed and around your deathbed are the dreams, the visions, the ideas that were in your mind while you were alive that you never took action on and did something about. You are going to be in a graveyard with all of your potential dying. My biggest fear in life, and I've always said this, I feel like I've only used 10% of my potential with no help. Imagine if I had a team and used the other 90%. My biggest fear in life is not utilizing the full potential that God gave me. God gave everybody a gift on this earth. I said in rehab every day in prayer, the one I actually prayed, not just prayed because I felt guilty that my mom wanted me to pray when I actually prayed. I said, I know you've been given every, you've given everybody on this earth a gift. And I know my gift is to use the power of my voice to yeah. heal people mentally and spiritually. Give me ways and strength and patience to use my voice for good. Yeah. And bro, I just want to say this before we end this podcast. It's such a good thing that you found your way back to the position that you're in because I could be here and be like, man, bro, you can do this. You can do this. But you not finding it on your own and you also going through all the shit that you went through to this point throughout your entire career, based on what you just said, I believe it to be extremely true. You are going to have so much more to give everyone because of what you've gone through. Like this is a part of it. Yeah. So this has been a really long podcast. Can we not answer the last question and me just tell you the story that's going to motivate people? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, Been on YouTube since 2011. Went bankrupt, lost everything in 2018, built myself up since and, then. And by the way, you went bankrupt after having how many millions of dollars do you think? Yeah, over seven million. Yeah. Easy. That's seven million like liquid, like seven million before, you know, all the money you've spent. And I would spend roughly like 40,000 a month minimum. Yeah. Um, lost everything. Got blackballed from the industry. Got kicked out of CAA. Moved in with my parents. Um, internet was over. Um, tried again and again and again and again. I legit remember you coming being like, oh, should I be a personal trainer? Yeah. I remember you telling me that. Came back, lost to Slim, uh, left that, started YouTube Cribs, left that, tried Twitch for a year with that guy who I told you about. Yeah. Was drinking and smoking on stream, stopped that, had the re-up year. The year's going great. I'm doing Dana Tube. Get knocked out by Bryce Hall in a reality show. Have yeah. to go to rehab. Career's over again. Come back from rehab, working myself all year. Fight Deji, lose Deji, and then everything that I told you up to this point. Yeah. In the last nine months, went to two mental health hospitals, did ketamine infusions for depression, did seven weeks of TMS for my brain, tried every different medication, and now I'm solidified on a medication. I went to Peru for ayahuasca. I spent months with my sister because I was scared. Nobody, My family didn't want me to be alone because of self-harm. I spent time with my mom and dad. I've spent time with my brother. I worked on myself. What out of all those things, I want you to continue, but what out of all those things that you tried to do to fix your problem helped the most? The one thing that I didn't say, the gym. It all starts with the gym. All Man, of it. Man, I'm so glad you said it. All of it. If I didn't get back in the gym and work out for 60 days straight and post my workout progress on Instagram, I never would have done it. So now that's why it's so stupid and hypocritical of me to get on and stop going to the gym and fart all day on a podcast because of all the sodium in your system. (laughs) I swear. That's why it's so important for him to have us um, or just like people that actually have his back or to be that foundation because sometimes you could just forget like the importance of discipline and having routine because the way that keeps us grounded and connected is so important yeah and it just really just me like, and her go to the gym together your gym and yeah. we live stream it yeah, yeah. i know um, I see you guys so we do so <laughs> you go early um yeah so i say that all that to say when god gave me success the first time i wasn't ready I was a young boy in his 20s, still a sex addict, still depressed, everything, who didn't have shit figured out. I wasn't ready. I always wondered, why did God do all this to me? Why the fuck does it always have to happen to me? Why can't I get a fucking W? The only reason I wanted to do the Deji fight was to show everybody the new Yusuf. And I ended up giving that speech at the end of the fight that said a person messaged me to say that he wanted to kill himself. And I replied and said, no, brother, you just want this current version of you to die. You want this current circumstances to die, but you don't ever want to die. I didn't plan that speech. God knew that I wasn't ready for the success. So I prayed every day and I said, God, you gave it to me the first time. I didn't know what to do with it. If you give it to me again, I know what I'm going to do with it. God had to put me through all the trials and tribulations to strengthen me, to work on me, to get me ready to be in this position now. 
that nine months, you could have easily at the gym said, oh, you're bankrupt, Yusuf. Here's 10,000. Here's this. Let me do this. I'm going to hire you to do this. You could have got me out of it. You would have enabled me and it would have fucked me up. But because you cared for me, you let me do it on my own. And that's why when I rank people, I tell them, if I rank you a G3, don't be so mad. Everybody wants to be a G7. I'm like, I ranked a 15-year-old a G3 yesterday. I said I ranked you a G3 because imagine all the work you're going to have to do to get up to a G7. And because I care for you, I'm going to let you work. I mean, bro. And the thing about God, too, is like he... It's it's when you're ready, but it's also like there's so much to learn too. Like for you to really be at that place that you want to be at, mm-hmm. you had to learn all the shit mm-hmm. to go through it. There's no other way. Um, right before the Deji fight, I'm sitting in my hotel in London and I do a prayer. And at my prayer, I think it's in my documentary, I say to God, I go, God, if you have it in your best interest to have me win, let me win and I'll still pray to you. If you have me to lose, I'll trust the process and I'll still pray to you. I could have lost that fight and stopped praying and said, fuck you, God, you're not there. I lost the fight, even though I was depressed, even though I was suicidal, everything, I still prayed. I prayed every day in that mental health hospital. I pray five times a day on stream. I'm proud of you, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you for this podcast. This podcast has been so therapeutic. So I finally get to be relaxed because I've been on such a high. I didn't have to do anything outlandish for support. And I hope it gets received nicely by the people. I think it will, too. I think it really will, for sure. I'm proud of you, man. Like, I just hope you keep going. Thank you. And if her interaction on the stream or anything, like, fucks up the views or anything, just AI her out. It's fine. Cut her out, yeah. Cut her out. Yeah. Crop, like, right here. Yeah. She smells. We'll throw she it away. Farts. She was farting. Like, yeah. I, she farts. It was her. She farts. It she wasn't farts. you. She it was farts. just her. She it's farts. usually me. You yeah. rip it, too? Yeah. I mean, when, when you think the mic's on his butt, it's usually She mic. likes when I fart. We're on the couch late at night yesterday watching Netflix. I fart. She starts laughing. I mean, what am I going to do? Cry? Again, there was a, I saw a bit where you smell, you smell some girl's fart. Was it her fart? Nadia's. Nadia's fart. Yeah. <laughs> Nadia doesn't have a good smell. Though. Nobody likes to smell She's socks. She's overrated. Whenever I take my socks Nadia's off. Nadia's overrated? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I call her little sister. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate you, man. Um, you, fucking subscribe to the channel. Check, check them out. Obviously on Twitch, you're, you're going to be back. Twitch and I'm going to start on Twitch and then switch over to kick. I'm going to do something that's going to break the internet. I have a skit planned and then jump to kick. Okay. And so after you got it to right off camera, you got to tell me, you got to tell me the deal. I'm really curious. Mm. And then we'll tell, tell me the idea. Yeah. Okay. All right. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, post notifications, all that good stuff. I love you guys. We're out of here. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. Uh, Shout out yeah. to G7. Keep dribbling, y'all. 0.4 seconds left on the clock. That's it. We're out of here. For the record, it's not me farting. I was kidding. That's Cap. You for sure <laughs> fart.